Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, how are you? Oh, we're doing good. Jenny doing good. Oh, yeah. how about that Kareem Abdul drum up last <laughs> night? He, he fit right in That's with coming. LeBron and AD. He immediately got hurt. Isn't that what Lakers do? They get hurt? We're going to talk Way about to that. Go, that. We're going to talk about it a little later. We're talking about it. I'm excited. Yeah. I like what I saw. Oh, did you? It was only a brief five minutes, but it was good. <laughs> I saw him limp all the way to the there locker room. I don't mean there to laugh. Go. A brief five minutes. Okay, don't worry. We will explain the situation there. Yes, we will address it. But I want to start Kareem with this, Abdul guys. Florida tight end Kyle Pitts put on a show during his pro day yesterday. The All-American ran a 4.45 40-yard dash and looked impressive catching balls during drills. Pitts, who has now risen to number two on Mel Kuyper's big board, also wasn't lacking any confidence, telling reporters, quote, at the end of the day with all the preparation and through the years, I feel like I'll be the best to ever do it. Shannon, do you like that he said this, and can he back it up? It doesn't bother me. I love the kid's confidence. I've talked to this kid on several occasions, Skip, and I like it. Have you? Yeah, I have. I, know I, that. Actually, I oh. actually have. Okay. Uh, and and uh, he had, Skip. Was he that confident to you? <laughs> no, 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 that confidence he's getting. You know, you just had to pick up my brain for a few things, uh, uh, asking me a few questions. And actually, we're supposed to get together at some point here. So and he had some humility. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. Good. But I like the confidence that he has in himself, Skip. And you hear me talk about all the time, Skip. The tape doesn't lie. All you do is hope that when you get the kid and you work him out, his measurables, his explosiveness, his, ex- his speed matches what you've seen on tape. It matched up. The guy ran four or five. You look at him, he plays fast. 83 and a half inch wingspan, so almost seven foot on a six five body. Grit. Six six, I think. Six, six yeah. with six five and five eights, yeah, I think. Okay, okay, so we will give him six six. All right. Skip. So that tells me he has a huge catch radius. The thing that I like about him, he can drop his hips, he can change speeds, which is very, very important for the tight end position. Yeah. So when I look at him, when I watch him on tape, when I watch him work out, I said, okay, he checks all the boxes. Skip, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, this is the way I judge a player. I think he's the best player in the draft because I think he's farther ahead than the next guy behind him. I think there's a bigger gap between the first tight end and the second tight end than there is Trevor Lawrence and the second uh, quarterback. Okay. Or Devontae Smith or Jamar Trace, yep. whoever you have at wide receiver. I believe there's a bigger gap with him than there are at the other positions. So, therefore, I think he's the best player in the draft. A lot of it's not where you go having Alvin Kamara, and I was talking to him about it, and I said it's really not how high you go, it's where you go. This is going to be really important. He needs to go somewhere that has a, skip at least a decent quarterback. I'm not saying the guy has to go to Tom Brady, but can we get a quarterback that's at least competent? Mm. Um, he has a chance to be really, really special. Now, it's, to say you're going to be, everybody says that, and I heard every kid says, I'm the best player in this draft. I've never heard a kid say, nah. That guy over there, he better than me, but I'll be okay. Everybody believes that they're the best. But this kid has all the measurables. He has the tape to back up the bravado in which he he spewed yesterday. So I don't have a problem with it, Skip. I think he has a chance to be really, really special. Now, if he goes to Atlanta at four, it's good night, Irene. Because you got Julio on one side, you got Calvin Ridley. Good luck. Good luck stopping that. And you got Arthur Smith calling the plays, who loves to involve the tight end in, in, uh, in his play calling. So he has a chance to be really good. 12 games at, what, at 12 touchdowns to eight games? Yep. Yeah, he's special. Mm-hmm. He's special. He's as good as any tight end, say, in the last 20 years. He's as good as any tight end that's come out in the draft in the last 20 okay, years. But remember, he went all the way to, I think I'll be the best to ever do it. Just give it that's easy to say. Okay, I know, but that's not just saying I'll be the best play the best tight end in the draft. He said, I'll be the best tight end ever. Yep, well, okay, skip, skip. so you were in the Hall of Fame <laughs> as a tight end. Is that too much too soon? Skip, I mean, he got a ways to go to catch Gronk, Gonzalez, Gates, <laughs> Kelsey. Well, I, skip, I understand the bravado. I understand. He's like, look, I believe with what I, what I have, the, the speed that I have, the size that I have, the ability that I have. But a lot of that has to do... <laughs> Gronk played with Tom Brady's whole career. That helps. I had John Elway for like 10 of my 14 years. That helps. Kelsey's going to have Patrick Mahomes skill for seven, eight years. That's going to help. I agree. You better try to get Mark Sanchez. You're not about to be the best at nothing. Yep. 
I got it. Sorry, Mark Sanchez, but I'm just saying, I'm just... Or Trent Dilfer. Yeah, yeah, God bless Trent Dilfer. Yeah, but you yeah, won a Super Bowl yeah, with Trent Dilfer, yeah, but, and you were, were one play shake. Yeah, yeah. You were going to get one play yeah, 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 but he has a chance to be really, okay. really good. All right. I have told you since I watched this young man play against Alabama, he is it. Mm -hmm. He is going to be better at what he does than any quarterback in this whole draft will be at what they do. I believe you're That's right. That's what I believe. I definitely believe you're right. And... Again, I'm not a big fan of pro days, but there are certain positions where you can see certain traits right. emerge where you say, whoa. And just the sheer measurements that you talked about, I'm not sure that Kyle Pitts is a tight end. He's going to recreate <laughs> some hybrid position. He might even be more wide out than tight mm -hmm. end. So the point is, he's more Megatron-esque to me, mm -hmm. but his wingspan measured longer than Megatron's. Right. His hands measured bigger than Calvin Johnson's Megatron. Yes. He he did 22 reps at 225 pounds on the bench press. And yeah, that's long, Skip. Nobody don't see guys that long because he's a wiry built, Skip. He's why he's he not. He's you, not you, you saw him running the 40. Yeah. He, he, he carried, he weighs 245, but right. he doesn't really look like no, he's he doesn't. carrying 245. No. That's the first thing I asked him. I was like, well, how much you weigh, man? I said, you are like 225, 230. He's like, nah, I'm 240, 245. Okay. So you have long arms, and it's hard to get the long arms underneath. The, the bench press, it's, it's hard because it, it, you lose range leverage. Range of motion, yes. Okay, what, what happens, it's the T-Rexes, it's, <laughs> it's the little short arms. They're the ones the who can push. The offensive right? D-Lab. <laughs> yeah, they can push the 225. Yes. And as you well know, 225 is not nothing, man. It's, no. it's a good amount yeah. of weight. Yeah. And to go 22 straight reps yeah. Yeah. As, as a potential wide out, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we don't see wide outs push 225 no. pounds 22 straight times. No. You just don't see it. So the speed was was not sensational, but you know four four five. It, it's it's yeah, it's, know, it's, it's plenty fast. It's plenty fast, and all I know is you say tape don't lie. Against Alabama, they just couldn't cover him. Mm -mm. He, he was running past people. Yeah. He has what they call football speed. Correct. He can carry his pads. Yes. At four four five. Yes. Okay. So, to me. I've been watching closely Mel Kuyper. I know Mel very well. Have huge respect for him going into these drafts. Mm -hmm. He has catapulted Kyle Pitts on his big board, not his mock draft, just his big board. He's just ranking him in order of this is Best how player. valuable. Mm -hmm. He's still got Trevor Lawrence at number one, but he has catapulted Kyle Pitts all the way to number two on right. his big board right. because that's where he belongs. Right. And you could maybe start making a case he belongs a little bit above Trevor Lawrence. You're not completely sold on Trevor Lawrence. No. I, Again, do I like him more than the other? Yes, I do. Yeah. But I look back at Trevor Lawrence. At QBR does not love Trevor Lawrence. Right. For what that's worth, it's my favorite stat right. grading quarterbacks. But it just never loved him. Any of his three years, he, he never finished first in QBR. He would always be seventh or eighth in the, right. the, in the, in the college football ranks mm -hmm. in QBR. And we know he's had a few stinkers in the postseason. Right. He's had some sensational Well, he games. didn't play particularly well against uh, LSU. He didn't nope. play particularly well against Ohio State the he last time not. around. But, uh, I mean, Skip, I mean, he, but he got off to such a great start. There was nowhere else to go but down after you go do what he did to Alabama right. as, a, as a true freshman. Right. And now he's coming off a laboring procedure in his right. non-throwing shoulder. Mm -hmm. So he did do a virtual workout where they get to see him just throw the football, but he has not run. He, he ran the 40 in high school, I found. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and he ran four seven eight. So I think he's faster than that. Well, I, we, yeah, because Skip, remember he broke out on Ohio State a couple of years ago. And they couldn't catch him. They couldn't catch him. <laughs> he, he looks like if he timed the 40 right Back. now, he'd be more in the four six ish range. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to think. four seven he, is plenty he, fast. Okay, it's, it's plenty fast. Your favorite quarterback ran five two eight. Whew, did he? So forget about that. But but he's got some yeah he got some athleticism, some athleticism yeah. going on, and Trevor's about six five ish. So right. he's more prototypically built than yeah. even any of the other quarterbacks. Correct. So here's the amazing thing to me about Mel Kiper's big board. Mm -hmm. It goes Trevor Lawrence one, and Kyle Pitts as I said, and then it goes receivers. It goes Devonte. Then it goes. Uh, Jamar Chase, yes. then it goes Jalen Waddle. So he's got one, two, three, four receivers in a row mm -hmm. after the first quarterback on his overall value right. board. I don't okay? know if we've ever seen that. I don't think we've ever seen that before. <laughs> and as he points out, listen, Jamar Chase, you sort of, it's out of sight, out of mind. Right. He opted out. Right. But 
He, he was in the conference with last uh, he, year before last. Two, two years yes. ago, and, and he dominated the national championship game. Remember, he had nine catches for 221 yards yes. from Joe Burrow, obviously, right. in mm -hmm. that, that title game. Right. And he was beyond Justin Jefferson, right. who took over this year as the best of the right. young white. He had the best production. Correct. I'm still hanging in with C.D. Lamb. Over time, <laughs> I think C.D. will emerge as the best. That's okay. just me. Okay. But I cannot argue with what Justin Jefferson yeah. did. And if you're telling me Jamar Chase is better than Justin Jefferson, whoo, yeah. you got something. Yes. Well, he opted out, so we don't have anything right. on him from last year. And, Skip, his measurables. 438, 41 inch vertical, oh, 11 foot standing broad jump. So yep. it tells you he's explosive, he's fast, he's everything that you saw on tape. He, okay. He, he displayed it for you. And we saw what Devontae did. He just destroyed college football. Right. Nobody could guard him. Nope. Just nobody. Nope. All, all the way home, nobody could guard him. Right. They tried every defense, junk defense they could throw at him, and nobody could stop him. Is he a physical specimen? He no. is obviously not. No. Have you ever seen by run routes any better than that kid no. can run routes? No, you just haven't. Okay, so he's at three, Jamar's at four, and then Jalen Waddell, who got hurt this year, obviously, sort right. of mid-year, they say he is the fastest of all the Alabama receivers, although Ruggs is... No, Skip, I had, I, I had uh, Devontae Smith, I did have him on my podcast, oh, yeah. and, and he told me, I asked him, I say, who would you take in a 40, Jalen Waddell or Henry, Henry Ruggs? He thought about it. He said, I got Waddle. Okay. Well, then Henry Ruggs ran 427, and he believes that Jalen Waddle is faster than Henry Ruggs in the 40. That is a mouthful. <laughs> and I do not doubt it. We just didn't get to see it at the highest right. level on the championship right. stage. But we saw it early on, Skip. Did we? And, and who, who went back to return punts for them? Jalen Waddle. Right. How did he get hurt? He got hurt on, on, a, a, on a return. return. Yep. Okay. So Justin Fields is not until six, then Zach Wilson is in seven on Mel's list. And then it goes two offensive linemen, both of whom opted out. And then Michael Parsons, the Penn State linebacker, opted out. It's hard to, to draw a beat on these right. kids because they didn't even play right. last right. year. And then we have to go all the way to 12th on this list of Mel's big board to get to Mac Jones. Right. And 13 is Trey Lance. Okay, so of all those quarterbacks, you say, who are you surest of? Well, I've told you from the start, I'm not Dead sure about any, any of, of them. them. Right. But, okay, I'll give you a slight edge to Trevor Lawrence. And then at number two, I think we're both starting to lean toward Matt Jones, Jones because right. you just look at the numbers he put up, albeit with his track team of receivers and right. his pro pipeline offensive, offensive line. line. Right. But, but still, it looks like he would be the next best. Next quarterback off the, the board. The next most likely. Mm -hmm. but, but, again, the Jets are penciled in to take – Zach, Zach Wilson, Wilson McShea released his, his uh, mock draft, I'm sorry, got Zach going to the Jets and Mac Jones going to San Francisco at three. Right. Okay, so the, the next one for McShea, you have to go to 11 where he has a big trade. He's got the Patriots trading up to 11 to take Trey Lance. Aha. Oh. So Mel ca calls Trey Lance the most intriguing prospect I've ever encountered in all my years of doing this. Well, I don't know what to make of him because I don't know him. Right. I, okay? I he, played, know, but, he played one game last year. Yeah, Skip, but I don't know if I'm moving up and giving up what I have to give up to move up to 11 to get him. I don't know if I want that just because I'm intrigued. I need some definitive, Skip. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I said Trey Lance. It's yeah. Justin Fields. Fields. I'm sorry. Justin Fields to the Patriots. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Trey Lance was going to go else, the, to the Panthers. Okay. That, he went first to the okay. Panthers at eight. I'm sorry. Um, so the point is... Justin Fields or Trey Lance, how, how do you differentiate? How do you know? Because I, now, what, what do you think of Justin Fields? You have your I do. Your I concerns. have my trepidations about him. But I think the, the thing is, is that most team, what most people will do, Skip, yep. Justin Fields played against tougher level competition. They tend to lean that way. Okay. That's just the way it is. So now we hear some reports that question his work ethic. And yet he said after his pro day, Justin Fields said, my work ethic is unmatched. Okay, where's the middle ground right. there? You trust it? You believe it? I don't know enough to know about right. that. Right. I, I don't. I don't really know enough about it, the, kid, the kid either, Skip. I just know for whatever reason it didn't work out for him at Georgia. Kirby Smart wanted to start Jake Fromm. I mean, let that sink in for a second. Jake Fromm started in front of this kid. He did. And the kid went to Ohio State. That's true. And was a two-year starter and was. was in the college football playoff both years. He was. Okay. Had some some give you question kind of games. Mm -hmm. he, he had some concerning games, right. obviously against Indiana last mm -hmm. year.
Northwestern. in Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. Okay, now to Trey Lance. Again, going to the Panthers in a trade-up. Okay, so Kuyper says, don't forget he went 17-0 and in his college career. Right. And in his, it would be not this year because they only played one game, but in the previous year he scored 42 total touchdowns and threw zero interceptions. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's small college. Right. It's the uh, F- FCS. F- FCS. Mm-hmm. And they won the championship. Ex- the exact school okay. where Carson Wentz came from. That is from. correct. North Dakota, North Dakota State. State. Yep. And he remains only 20 years of age. Right. So could he be the outlier here? Could he, he be, be the one? Yeah. Could he be the one where you say, bingo, mm-hmm. we got that guy. Right. Right? Yeah. So Carolina, who was sitting on, we thought, Deshaun Watson, is starting to lean in that direction. Right. Okay, so now we go back to the Jets at two with Zach Wilson. Both of us say, well, the Coastal game wasn't impressive. Right. So I dig back in. You still like Sam Darnold. I don't. Mm-hmm. But you say if you want to go forward, stick with Stam- Sam Darnold, mm-hmm. then you have to take Kyle Pitts there. That's what I told you yesterday. Right. Why wouldn't you do that? He is a life changer. Right. He, he just might put Sam Darnold back on the map right. for the Jets. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah he, he just might, Skip, and you have a... a I would what I would do, Skip, is that if I take Kyle Pitts there, I still have Seattle's pick. I'll package Seattle's pick this year and Seattle's pick next year, and I'll come back up and I get me a receiver. I'll get Devontae Smith. I'm getting Jamar Chase. I'm coming back up to get one of them, Skip. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, Donald as many weapons as I possibly can. And if it doesn't succeed, Skip, it's like what the Patriots what the Patriots did for Cam. Well, Cam, now we got your two tight ends, we got your two wide receivers. Yep. If it doesn't work now, it's not on us, it's on you. Mm-hmm. Sam Darnold, we give you Kyle Pitts, we give you Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith. If it does not work now, it's on you. Okay, of those receivers, who will be the best at the next level? <laughs> Jeez. Again, it's contingent on what And keep, throw Kyle Pitts into the mix. I think Kyle Pitts has the chance to be a every 10-year player. He could be, Skip, you know what? He has the size and he moves like Darren Waller. Okay. That, that's, who he, that's who he kind of reminds you of. Okay, got and it. And you see what Waller's doing. Mm-hmm. So he, he has the ability to do that. Okay. So he could be, Skip, he could be a eight, nine-time Pro Bowl player. He could be a... Four or five first team time all pro. He has that kind of ability. He has those kinds of measurables. Mm-hmm. You watch the tape, you watch him work out, yep. and they match. Yeah. Sometimes Skip, they don't they don't match. Sometimes we see guys do good on tape, but they don't time. Terrell Suggs was a perfect example. The dude had 22 sacks, but the dude ran 4849. I just said, hold on, I gotta go back and look at something. Arizona State. Arizona State. Mm-hmm. He ran 489, 485 and a 490 on a track with track shoes. He did. But Ozzy said, hold on. Somebody's been in the corner getting those 20 sacks. I'm taking him. Okay. He's rookie of the year. He's going to the uh, defensive defense rookie of the year. He's defensive player of the year. And he's going to the Hall of Fame. Okay. So. Like, Ka- okay. Emma Smith falling, falling <laughs> through the first round because he, run, he timed 4-6. Four, 4-6. Six. Four, six, four, six? Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? And Jimmy Johnson said, uh. I saw him up close and personal. <laughs> exactly. I know what he did exactly. to me yes. when I was coaching college football. Exactly. I'm taking him. And yes. they traded up with Pittsburgh to snatch him yes. in the middle of the first round. And all he did was have the most rushing touchdowns, okay. the most rushing yards. He's a well, two-time MVP, league MVP, Super Bowl MVP. Super Bowl MVP. So the rest yes. is – but Kyle Piskip, when you look at him, every box, he checks it. He checks it. And that's all – that's what – Film box, check. Measurables, check. Size, speed, strength, check, check, check. Okay, so in the end, to me, he is by far the best player at what he does right. in this draft. And he is potentially transcendent. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say he is. You mentioned Waller. Waller's had self-confidence issues right. that have affected him. He's had it off the field yeah. issues. I, I, yeah. Ozzie selected him. Selected but him. he couldn't get it right, but he, couldn't get he it right. got his now life together. Now he finally figured it out. Okay, I got it. This kid, w- when he says, I think I can be the best to ever do it, I, I buy it. I believe him because I think he truly believes right. he can be. At, That's not just a bunch of empty talk. Skip, you remember uh, Evan Ingram and mm-hmm. O.J. Howard, all those guys, and they came out with all those measurables? Yep. This kid has to get kids better than all of them. 
this kid's tape is better than all of those tape. What he was able to do, because a lot of because a lot of times, Skip, guys can run fast with a straight line speed. Yep. He has the ability to shift. He has the ability to drop his hips. That's why I measure guy. A guy that, 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 that you, hell, if I want somebody fast, I go get Christian Coleman. He can run on a straight line, but I need a guy that can drop his hip. I need a guy that can transition, get in and out of breaks. Mm. That's what this guy can do. He can accelerate, decelerate, accelerate again. And that's what you look for in a wide receiver. You don't want guys, because a lot of times, Skip, speed guys, they tip their routes because they, they build up so much speed, and it takes such a long time for them to get out of that break and yeah. do what they call it, throw that blink on. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. And here come the DB driving on it. This kid here is in and out. Drop his hips, and he's gone. Okay. So I hear you. There's Gronk. There's Tony Gonzalez. There's Shannon Sharp. (laughs) <laughs> and then today, there's Kittle and yeah. there's Kelsey. I, we, I get that. And we just jumped on and Antonio okay. Gates. just got the most touchdowns to ever. I don't think Kyle Pitts is even that that position. I, right. I think he's something else that he will recreate in the Megatron tradition. Right. Where he will split out wide or sometimes be in the slot. Right. And you won't be able to cover him. And you won't figure out, do we put a DB on him? Do we put safety on him? Do we put a linebacker on him? Well, the thing is, Skip, you better have a Levante David and you better have guys that can go get to the quarterback if you want to do it. Yep. Because if you try to take him man to man and you're going to say, well, you got no help. You just got a man all over the field. I don't know if you're going to be successful playing that style with him. Yep. Because the kid is huge. He can run. He can make tough contested catches in a crowd. And if he does wind up with a middle of the road, an average quarterback, he will make that kid, whoever it is, better. Right, right. Because that kid can just wing it in his direction yeah. and he will go snatch it. You better not let him get with somebody good. Yep. It's over. Well, does Matt Ryan still have enough left in the tank? Oh, yeah. I think he does. You, you saw what he did for Austin Hooper, got yep. him to the Pro Bowl and got him paid with the he Cleveland. Did. He did. No mercy. Andre Drummond's Lakers debut did not go as well as the center had hoped. Drummond left the game the third quarter with a bruised toe and would not return in the Lakers' 112 to 97 loss. The X-rays were negative, and now he's listed as day-to-day after he said his toe was stepped on by Buck center Brooke Lopez. Drummond finished with four points, a rebound, and a block in 14 <coughs> minutes of play. So, Shannon, are you encouraged or discouraged by his night? I'm encouraged, but Skip, mm. let me tell you what happened. Mm. And I think we've all had this happen before, Skip. We go to the store, we want a pair of shoes. And they don't have our size, but they say, well, the biggest size we got, now I'm a 13. They say, the biggest size we got, uh, 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 sir, is a, a 12. But I really want that shoe. I got to squeeze up in it, Skip. <laughs> and then if somebody step on my feet, my dog's going to be barking. And that's what Andre Drummond, he wanted to come out there in them Jordan Lowe's. Mm. No good, well, he was 17, but the biggest size they had was a 16. The Lakers <laughs> don't even have a size nah, 17. No, they, they got nobody. They got feet that big. everything. They got to feet that big. And he run up and down the court, Brooke Lopez stepped on it, and, and his, toenail, his toenail came off, Skip. You know that's painful, man. I, I don't wow. know if you ever had a toenail. <laughs> But being playing in the NFL, skipping the temperatures is wet, it's cold, it's rainy, it's hot. People stepping on you with those spikes and your toenails. Ooh. But, Skip, I saw more of a presence last night in five minutes of Andre Drummond than I've seen in three months of Mark Gasol. Well, that's not saying much. Th- that's my point. Yep. But here's the thing. It does not matter how he looked last night. How is he going to look with goat and baby goat? Mm. I think he'll be just fine. Mm. He was just fine. He's challenging shots at the rim. That's what we need. Mark, Mark is not going to be able to challenge anything. He's athletic. He can get back and play the pick and roll, Skip. He's going to get some lobs. I like what I saw. I'm very encouraged. No, it did not go um, the way we had hoped. But I, I, I'm trying to think, Skip. I mean, what would we expect? The guy hadn't played in six months. You expect him to give you a 30-20 game in his first game back? No. Not six months. No, I said six weeks. Oh, six me. weeks. I yeah, yeah. Six, okay. six weeks. Yeah. And last game was February, February 12th. 12th. Yeah. yeah. So he hadn't played in six weeks. Yep. So what were we expecting from him? Mm. But I, I was very encouraged by what I saw. I saw a guy that was active. I saw a guy that was engaged. And like I said, he just got there, what, Sunday. Uh, probably his first practice was Monday. They played Wednesday. So as he gets more familiar mm. w- with the, uh, the offense, the defense, and what's going on, I think he's going to be a huge addition for the Lakers. So I am very encouraged by mm. what the little bit that I did see last night. Okay, allow me to say, welcome Kareem Abdul-Drummond, <laughs> Laker savior. <laughs> and allow me to say how <laughs> sorry I feel for this still young man because he's been thrust into a spotlight he does not deserve at this point in his career because he's done nothing to deserve Laker savior status. And I still say the audacity of Jeannie Buss, and I like Jeannie, but she went completely over the line 
to post social media pictures comparing her greeting Andre Drummond to yeah. her father, the great late Dr. Jerry. We welcome Hunter. everybody with open yeah. arms. Let them know okay. they're part of Laker Nation, Laker family. Yeah, and he was welcoming one Kareem Abdul Jabbar, <laughs> who had been with the Milwaukee Bucks, but had played at UCLA and won national championships and dominated college basketball, probably the way it's never been dominated before at UCLA. <laughs> Right? right? And then he had only won three MVPs with the Bucks and won a finals MVP. And here he comes to L.A. just like Andre Drummond came in and Jeannie greeted him. Yeah. And Andre Drummond has won uh, nothing. But Kareem was arriving and there was no LeBron or, or AD in place. He was arriving and the couple was bare. They ended up having to get Jamal Wilkes. They ended up having to get Nor uh, uh, draft Norm Nixon. Well, who and they had to guy. get was Magic Johnson. Well, that that, yeah. that, that okay. definitely helped. Okay, that, that definitely helped. <laughs> but the point was, he was under extreme pressure. And then right on cue, what happens? He freakishly gets hurt. And this is just me. I've been, in fact, I covered Kareem Abdul Jabbar's Los Angeles Lakers for the LA Times starting in 1976, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I know what that is. And I know this league pretty well. I don't ever remember a player getting stepped on during a game and losing his toenail because of that immediate impact mm -hmm. injury. Now, if he already had what's called a black toenail, mm -hmm. where like I, I've gotten them all the time from running, if your shoe gets too sweaty or yep. tight, yep. and you run too much downhill, yep. and you go boom, that, boom, that, boom. That toe keeps hitting. The, and, and the blood goes underneath yeah. the nail, and then it just it dies, dies, and it correct. just finally falls off. Maybe it was well, already- Well, take them, we used to have to take them off. Okay. The doctor would come well, take Well, you could do that. Yes. But that's not as painful. It, the, the, the whole prospect of, of it got ripped off. It hurts. Well, I've I, had I, it happen. I, but have you had it happen in a game? No, where no, it yeah, the yeah, off? yeah. But Skip, but like you said, it was accumulation. It had to be it, accumulation. And it kept getting stepped on. It, it was it, just Skip, like a bad break. It was exactly the wrong spot at the wrong time. Skip, you know, you ever had a situation where you bite your tongue once, and it seems like every day for the next two weeks you, you bite just, your tongue in that exact same yeah. spot. Well, I kept getting my toe stepped on every single game, every practice, and then eventually I'm in a game, and mm. then after the game I look at it, I'm taking the tape off. And the toenail comes off with the tape. Actually, I've never been accused of biting my tongue about anything, right? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. it's a figure yes, of speech. Yes, it's a figure of speech. I got it. Okay, back to Andre Drummond. So I don't know how to qualify or disqualify his performance. Uh, I did like it that he's lost weight, and I don't know how you take off six weeks. Usually you gain weight. Right. But he, he said he lost 10 to 15 pounds. That's a lot of weight. So, he he was, looked, he he looked damn, so in other words, he was damn near 300. I, well, he looks svelte last <laughs> yeah. night. He looked like he could actually run up and down he, the floor. He ran up and down the court a lot faster and harder than I thought he would. I, I would agree. So he ended up playing 14 minutes and 20 seconds. He scored four points. And yet he gained only one rebound. He had one rebound to his name in 14 minutes. That's perplexing to me. And he already he had three turnovers in 14 minutes, yeah. which is that doesn't add up for me. But. I got to give him a pass. I got to give him a break because he said Brooke Lopez stepped on his toe right. early. So then what am I supposed to do with what happened? I think it was 8.55 left in the third quarter. Do you remember this play? Game was starting to get out of hand, and he goes up for a dunk, and Brooke Lopez says, no, no, not in your house. This is supposed to be your house, and Brooke blocked his dunk. Is that because his toe was hurting? I don't know. I was a little troubled by that. I don't I'm, know about I'm you. Were you concerned? No. Okay, he's not a high rise. No, 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 no. Yep. Skip the man. The man, three hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used to be. I thought maybe at his new svelte weight, he could at least get up over Brooke Lopez, who's not exactly a leaper in and of himself. He's long, but he's yeah. not a leaper. He's over seven foot tall. Skip okay. Me. Well, he just had he to got he blocked that dog. We'll get okay. him back. Okay. He, he so Andre had to eat it in his own new house. He ate it. I could watch that all day. But I'm not going to watch about 15 what, what, what more they times. Call the, who they call the, I'm trying to figure out where the foul happened. There's no foul. They did call a foul. It's a clean block. No, they called a foul. You see, they got referee said no. It's a charge. You, they called Drum and say a push off or something. No, they called him for offensive yeah, foul. Yeah, I'm Which saying. I, I'm not going to go there. No, exactly. Thank you. See? No, okay. But he just got. He, no, he, like, that's a foul. foul. He ate some scalding. <laughs> he ate it. <laughs> Come on, Shannon. You got to give me more than that. If the, you're the Lakers' savior, I know you got a toe injury, but come on. I think Wilson is the official uh, basketball. Wilson, player. whatever it is. Yeah, it used to be Spalding. It used to be, okay. yeah. Wilson well, you, you ain't some Jerry West, right? <laughs> you ain't Jerry West in your own house. Ah, your day coming. You okay, so here's the big picture takeaway from last night. 
Sometimes years are meant to be. Last year's Laker run was just absolutely meant to be. They got every break possible. The Clippers did not want to be in that bubble. The Clippers folded against the uh, Nugget. Denver Nuggets because they didn't have a point guard. They had nobody to set their table when they needed to down the stretch of those four, five, and six, uh, six, yeah, five, well, six, seven. five, six, seven games. And yet, the Lakers get to the finals and they get every break because they draw the fifth seed in the finals and the fifth seed has already lost Goran Dragic and lost Bam in game one. Well, those are just breaks. Yeah, we didn't draw them. Mm -hmm. They beat the other seeds, the top seeds on the other side. No, but you, you sort of luck into them because when do fifth seeds get to the finals? It just doesn't happen doesn't very happen. often. Especially, okay. yeah, when you play the, the, you know, the best of seven, we get fifth seeds in the, in the final four because okay. it's one game. I got but not that. the best four out of seven. And normally okay. four out of seven win. All right, so here we go. In this year, and it seems like the injury gods are saying, okay, I gave you breaks last year, not this year. It, it just like, feels like it's not meant to be. It seems like the injury gods really want a Jokic to win that MVP. Okay. Because well, that James Harden is hamstring is after He's the got ball. A pull. I, they just said it was strained or. Skip. Yeah. You can't keep playing James Harden 40 minutes, 42 minutes. That's true. I'll, I'll buy that. Because uh, he's uh, leading the league in minutes. 38.1 minutes. Yeah. At 32. Uh, let Julius Randle, those guys that's 24, 25, 26 years of age, they can play those kind of minutes. High minutes. Yeah, you start getting those guys in their 30s and playing, and considering James Harden has played major minutes over the last eight years, yep. you got to start backing him down and, and think big picture. Okay, so everything this year seems by default because all the superstars seem to be hurt. They and are. we're just waiting for them all to come back. KD, Le LeBron, yep. Steph, Joel Embiid, yep. not James Harden. Yeah, how about the Clippers? They had to play a game two nights ago, and they lost at home to Orlando, and they were without five of their top six players. Well, that's ridiculous at this point in the season. So who can throw themselves back together? Who gets healthy fast enough right. to figure out the rest of the year? Because you're going to have to figure out Andre Drummond on the fly. Yeah, the Lakers got their work cut out for them because if I'm not mistaken, Skip, their next seven games are on the road. Yep. And they got the Heat, they got the Nets, they got, uh, they got, a, they got, a, whew, they got yep. a tough stretch. They got the Clippers on Sunday. They got the Clippers on Sunday. It looked like it was going to be a big game when the season started. Yeah. Now it doesn't look like it's going to be it's much gonna, of a game. Be a good, good. So LeBron has now missed his sixth straight game. Anthony Davis has missed his 20th straight game. At some point, the, you you got to get them back, and, and you got to let them figure out how to work in their new teammate Le into their flow. LeBron do that. He just does oh, it like do that. that. He rolls LeBron, out of bed. LeBron do that. that. Really? You remember how we took on Jordan Clarkson, took on Larry Nair at the last second at Rodney Hood? Yeah, and then and we, what happened? And we got to the finals. Yeah. That's what we did, got to the finals. Okay. That's, what, that's what happened. Really? Yeah. Okay. And then what happened? We ran against Golden State, a much better team. <laughs> okay. We, uh, so you yeah. expected us to be the Warriors with KD, Steph, and Clay. If you got the best player on the planet, you should have done that because you got everything. You you were throwing a victory parade here at the day after the trade. I, I like the trade, Skip. I said we was going to the finals. Okay. Skip, you, you, I can't even believe you said that. People at home, y'all hear what he's saying? Yeah. They LeBron heard. James should have beat with, with Jordan Clarkson, who's playing unbelievable, going to be sixth man of the year. Larry Nance, mm -hmm. JR, and what they had. Should have beaten. Loaded. KD. Loaded. Steph. Yeah. Clay. Really, Skip? Yep, hey, really. Kay, really? Yep. You said that with a straight face. Well, I mean, you, you tell me that LeBron's better than Kevin Durant, right? Skip, the best player versus the best team. Oh, okay. Well, if that was the case, the best player in college was Michael Jordan. Mm. Why he didn't win the why national championship the next two, two years? He was there. Mm. He's the best player in college. There's only one man who could stop him. Uh, no, 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 Dean no, 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 Smith. Do don't do that, Skip. Go see. Dean you see? Smith. You see? you see? That's Dean Smith's fault. There ain't no Dean Smith's well, fault. it is. It you was. know good well one man is not beating no team, Skip. Well, no coach can stop LeBron because he's the coach. Oh, Lord. They, right? No, he's not. Yeah, come he, on, he, he just does what they ask him to do. Okay. Except, uh... <laughs> What's the guy that got fired, Skip, that told him to take yeah. the ball out? Blatt. <laughs> David Blatt, yeah, David yeah. Blatt. Yeah. We, we may or may not have had something to do Blatt with it. Blatt went splat <laughs> when he did that. Shannon, it's feeling not meant to be, and I'm I'm pretty discouraged by what I saw from I, your I man, ain't discouraged. Kareem Abdul-Drummond. I'm not just, discouraged I, at all. I don't, I don't think okay. he measures up to what Jeannie posted on social media. I'm just not sure about that. Just stick with me, Skip. Yep. Just stick with Savior? me. Savior? Just, just stick with me, Skip. Really? That's all. Huh. I mean, I, remember, I used to go in the kitchen all the time and be looking in the pots. I'm like, Granny, that don't... She said, baby, mm. it ain't even halfway done yet. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, but you put that thing out of the... You set it out on the table. All I know <sighs> is poor Andre Drummond stuck his toe in that Laker water, and he said, oops. There you go. It's too hot there for you me. Go. It's too hot. I got to get to the locker room. The man got his toe stepped on. Toe in the water. It's too hot. <laughs>
too hot to handle. I got to take the next. You already said off. that you've already had this happen to you. You know how painful it is. Well, well, it, it's not is that seven painful. Seven feet it just tall. Falls off. That is probably painful coming down on you. Okay. Well, hopefully it's not a a long time. He's away. We will address it when he's back. Uh, I'm going to totally shift gears here, guys. There's some new news with Tiger Woods. Detectives say they have determined the cause of Tiger Woods' car crash, but. They're not going to release the information due to privacy concerns. L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva told reporters that the investigation is now closed and they needed Tiger's permission before releasing information about the crash. Shannon, what is your reaction to how this is being handled? Skip, this is strange. So let me get this straight. You subpoena to have the black box from the car recovered and download the data. Mm -hmm. You get that information... And then you say, well, we're not going to reveal what we found because it's a private matter. No, it's not. It's just like no celebrity is entitled to privacy in a public place. No. Nope. Because I can't go to a restaurant and say you can't get no pictures of me. Mm -hmm. I'm in a public building. Yep. This is on a public highway. That is correct. So he is entitled to no privacy. Mm. It's hard for me to imagine a normal citizen could get this kind of treatment. Oh, well, we can't tell you what happened. That's what they do all the time, Skip. Yep. He was traveling at this rate of speed, yep. or he dozed off, or mm -hmm. he, you could say if, if he had an episode of something, maybe he had a seizure or something, you could say he suffered a medical emergency. Okay. We don't want to get into the details. You could do that. But to say uh, it's a privacy issue, now it's going to be hard for me to say somebody that the Freedom of Information Act don't sue and get this information. It's going to have, it's going to come out, Skip, because I don't see how Tiger Woods in, is entitled to privacy with something that happened on a public street. Yep. He damaged public property. Well, I guess you could say the estate, the sign that he ran into, I guess you could say that, that's private property, property, but it was on a public highway when mm -hmm. this happened. Skip, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what the, what the sheriff, Villanueva, and he he, he been he been on one for the last couple of months. <laughs> he's always just, yeah. he, and I can't trust him. After what he allowed and what he tried to sweep up on the rug with, uh, with, with Kobe, Nah, so I, I'm, I'm out with him already to begin with, so I don't trust him. Okay. And you know, Skip, on any incident, especially, they're going to get that blood. They're going to get that toxicology. they going to get we, the blood. We got to make sure that yep. everything, there was no foreign substance. You were not under the influence. That's what they do with everybody. But Tiger, they're like, oh, that's Tiger Woods. Let's just, we're going to make sure he's okay. Mm -hmm. Skip, they, they, they got to get that. So they botched this on several different occasions. And I guess what happens is they don't want to tell because, Skip, if he's at fault, you probably have to charge him with something. Yep. And they say, well, we're not going to charge him with just an accident. Well, if it was just an accident, you would not have sued to get the back black box. Yep. You just left well enough alone. So this makes no sense to me. And a little bit of little method, the little law, little law information that I know. Yep. But this doesn't seem, this doesn't jive to what they would normally do in a normal circumstance. I so agree with everything you just said. It's good to have fans in high places. I don't know if he's a friend or just a fan of yeah. Tiger, but that's how it comes across to yes. me. Okay, before I launch into what I'm going to say, I do step back from all this, and I think most people do, and say, the man, Tiger Woods, <laughs> has suffered enough, mm -hmm. and he did. He probably came close to losing his life. He's very fortunate he didn't lose his life. Correct. He may not be able to walk again properly from this point that forward. That is correct. It may wreck the rest of his golf career. We hope not. I'm going to knock on wood for him over golf here. Golf is probably the last thing on his the mind The last right thing now. on his mind. And thank the Lord above that he didn't take another life because by all accounts, he did not break. He did not swerve. He went he jumped the median and went across two lanes of oncoming traffic. Correct. Well, how fortunate were we all that he didn't take another life? Correct. Including right. perhaps his own. Because you definitely, at the, he didn't yeah. break oncoming traffic. No. Well, somebody's dying. Usually. It's, it's a recipe for yes. disaster. And at a fairly high rate of speed right. because he was going on a very dangerous downhill already. Mm -hmm. But I think most people sit back and say, well... He didn't hit anybody else. He right. didn't endanger anybody. He right. endangered them, but he didn't, right. he didn't hurt anybody else. Correct. He hurt only himself. He destroyed some property, but they can figure that out. I think most people are saying, just leave him be. Right. He suffered enough. You'll make restitution to the first side <laughs> yeah, and, right. and move on. Okay. But 
for the sheriff to say there were no obvious signs of impairment is just wrong. Right. You, you, you don't can't know. assume that. Right. And by all the forensics that we know, it, it comes across as he he either dozed off or just drifted off right. at the wheel. Right. Like he, he lost conscious uh, right. um, focus on what he was doing mm -hmm. because he did not break. Right. He did not swerve. He right. did not skid. There are no skid marks. So obviously, could he have just had a long night and right. fallen asleep at the wheel right. at 7 a.m. in the morning? He could have. Right. Obviously, he was coming off a recent back surgery. Right. Did he have a reason to still be on his pain medication? Right. Sure he did. Right. Absolutely. And he's had a history he's with had, pain medication and Ambien and those things. He's Remember, had two they called incidents. In, was the Florida skip when he mm -hmm. thought he was in Orange County and he, he was did. in Florida? He had two of those incidents where he got, he, he was found sitting behind the wheel of a running car. Correct. Just out of it or asleep at the wheel. Correct. Both times he was just completely out of it. Right. Okay. And they checked and it was Ambien and painkillers. Mm -hmm. All of the above. Could that have happened here? Maybe, but we don't know that. Right. Okay, but why didn't you do the toxicology report? I, I don't know why. They said he couldn't, at, at the crash scene, he could not remember even driving at all. Right. But that he was lucid enough to answer the officer's questions. Correct. Right. So did that qualify him for no blood test? No. I, I don't think so. Because you still had an opportunity once you got, it, once you got him in the, uh, the, uh, op, the OR. Yep. You could have took the blood work. You could have taken the blood work. So this whole idea of we need his permission, the family's permission, no. what is that about? That, that, and, and a lot of criminal experts have said, no, what are you talking that's about? That's absurd. Yeah. Well, that's what Sheriff Villanueva keeps trying to sell. Well, he tried to sell that uh, I guess his, uh, his deputies could show people pictures of a crime scene or a that. crash site. Yep. That's what he tried to convince people that they have the right to do. And you don't. The judge says, no, mm -hmm. you can't. Right. And for him to just dismiss this as an accident, you, you, you can't. Because it's like dismissing a drunk driving right. uh, crash as, oh, it was just an accident. Well, well, I would have probably just brushed it off mm -hmm. had you not subpoenaed to get the black box. Yep. If you said this is just an accident, that's what it was, an accident, and accidents happen, mm -hmm. okay, fine, that's good enough for me. Yep. I'm still like, well, damn, you didn't get no mm -hmm. blood work? I mean, normally you always get blood work. I can hard to believe if this was a normal citizen, you're not taking blood work. But then you subpoena to get the black box. Mm -hmm. Why did you subpoena to get the black box if it was an accident? And when you did that, he announced, we will do a big press conference and we will give you all the details. Thank you. Now you gave us a, wow. now you gave him a little, some little Facebook Live and says, nah, we can't do this unless Tiger gives us permission. Really? So now, Skip, I guess if that's the case, no defendant would ever give you the permission to say what the he or she did. No. Nope. They, 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 what, what is, this is absurd. What, why, do, why do sometimes police think they, they give you an explanation that they would never believe them? Say, they, they would never ask, never believe if you told them that. Yep. You know, you can't. You know, I've never, I, Skip, I've never heard. And I, I love I love law shows, but I've never heard the defendant having these kinds of rights mm -hmm. that I, you know, well, I can't divulge it because the defendant doesn't want me to. He's entitled to privacy. What? Mm. Oh, oh, come on, Sheriff. We need to vote your butt out. Mm. Well, uh, it, it smacks of you. Do you remember the movie L.A. Confidential? Yes. OK, like going all the way to the top. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you. I, I just. I, I've never. I've never heard anything like this. I mean, you know, that's what you told us, Skip. Like you said, he said we're going to get this. You know, we subpoenaed the black box. Yep. We're going to get this information, and we'll have. We'll do a full investigation, mm -hmm. and we'll give you the details once we find out. Oh, by the way, we know Tiger won't let us do it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's concerned about a lawsuit. Uh, what lawsuit? No I don't know. I can't figure it out. Hi, Tiger. Hello, Skip. You can't. If you. If I have an accident, mm -hmm. I can't sue you. The police, because they divorce. Now, obviously, if, you, if it's a crime scene or something like that, Skip, you and there's death. Obviously, what happened with Kobe? That's a separate incident. But the helicopter, the, the uh, NSTA, Skip, when they did the National Transportation Board, I think that's what they called NSTP mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, they told you what happened. It was pile of error. He got disoriented. He thought he was riding above, and he ran into the side of a mountain. They told you what happened. They did. It's as simple as that. They can't say, well.
Well, uh, uh, Vanessa doesn't want us to tell you what happened. She doesn't. She wants to know what happened. Mm -hmm. She just didn't want you to have taking pictures of her husband and showing uh, your little trying to your little pickup line. That's what she didn't want. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know what happened to her family. The other families wanted to know what happened to their family. Was it mechanical error? Mm -hmm. Was it human error? Mm -hmm. Okay, was the car at fault, Skip? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, you remember the Pinto, it, they would explode on impact. Come to find out, it was, the, the manufacturing was flawed. Well, uh, well. Come on. Well, the sheriff says the investigation has concluded, and that's it. So should his 10 sheriff. sheriff. Okay, <laughs> there you go. No mercy. Two more civil suits have been filed against Deshaun Watson, bringing the total to 21 now. And yesterday, Watson's lawyer responded with statements from 18 females who claim to have had positive business experiences with the quarterback while giving him massages and said nothing inappropriate occurred. So, Shannon, what do you make of the latest developments? Skip, we know this where this was heading. Um, this is going to come down to uh, basically he said, she said, times 20. Mm -hmm. Um Deshaun's attorney, Rusty Harden, has gone out and find women that have also worked on Deshaun Watson and said nothing inappropriate happened. Now, Skip, you and I have been talking about this for like three weeks, and I'm going to be fair. And I think it's only right for me to be fair and say this. Because something didn't happen with these doesn't mean something didn't happen with these. But it also doesn't mean that it did. Yep. So let's try to be fair. Let's mm -hmm. try to be open-minded. Let's let the facts. But, Skip, I just don't like the way Busby is handling because everything is, everything is, is oh, I have all this information, I'm ready to turn it over. He's been ready to turn over information for the last two weeks. And every time they says, okay, give me what you got, give me what you got. Well, I found out that uh, uh, Deshaun's uh, attorney's son works for the Houston PD. Well, unless it happened in another, another jurisdiction, they have precedence. You can't take it to the Dallas PD. You can't take it to the San Antonio PD because they have no jurisdiction over the case. Mm. So what are your options? Yep. You're going to go to the, your, your Department of Justice to do it, open up an investigation? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's getting it's getting away, Skip. Now it's it's like it's circus like. It's circus. I, I, yeah. I don't I don't, I, and I'm not saying that the women are not telling the truth, but the way he's handling it, yeah, it seems like he's trying to convict Deshaun in the court of public opinion, mm -hmm. make him concede and just settle this. Well, he's too far in now to settle it. It's too it's it's, it's already out there. So now he's going to have to go there and put his reputation on the line. And says, okay, this is what happened. This is what did not happen. The interaction that I've had with these young women was all consensual. That's what he's going to have to do, Skip. There's no turning back now. So, but for me, for, for Tony Busby to keep going, as, you know, I got another one and I got another one and I got another one and I got another one, mm -hmm. but I got all this information. Bro, put your cards on the table and let's go. Yep. If you got what you say you got, if you believe these women are telling you the truth, Go hand it over to the Houston PD. Let them do their investigation. Let them, let Rusty Harden, the investigator, let him talk to these women. Yeah. Let the Houston PD, let them talk to these women. What you holding out for? Mm. Either you got the goods or you don't. But stop playing with this circus-like atmosphere, this free freezer. Man, another one to shine, another one to shine. Until you put some cards on the table, Skip, I think you're bluffing. Really? Yeah. Mm. Put some cards on the table. Boy, that'd be a big bluff. 21 civil cases. Oh, I'm saying, Skip, you told, he told us a week ago, he had the information, he's ready to turn over to the Houston PD. He told us a, a week after that, I got it, I'm finna turn it over. Now, I don't want to turn it over. Skip, I'm not saying that, I believe, I don't know if, if he has 21, he might just be saying 21, but I want him to whatever he has. Well, he's filed 21 right. suits, yeah. Why can't he just, if he has that, mm -hmm. why can't he just turn it over to the Houston PD? Because they're the only one that has precedent over it because it happened in, if I'm not mistaken, that's Harris County. It they're is. They're the only one that has precedent over it. He can't take it anywhere else. <laughs> Yet he, Busby released a statement. My legal opponent, Mr. Harden, as you point out, has a son who is on the exclusive command staff of HPD, Houston Police Department. And then he went on to say, I, I, I'm not saying that that means they would compromise, but that's what's exactly what you said. You know, that's that's what, what you put it out there for, Skip. Right. Okay. I hear everything you said. I'm going to do my biggest takeaway from yesterday. Now we have 21 civil suits filed against Deshaun, right. 21 separate massage therapists. Correct. And now. Rusty Harden has found 18 women willing to vouch for Deshaun, saying he did nothing out of inappropriate. line. Inappropriate. Yes. That means 
we're up to a grand total of 39 different massage therapists. Right. So my biggest takeaway is Deshaun is definitely a serial massage seeker, <laughs> right? Serial, because this is 39 different ones over yeah. a three-year period. Yeah, yeah, that's... And it's just a lot of different massage therapists. Yeah. And just, just on the sheer level of reckless behavior, yeah. this is reckless dangerous behavior right because we talk you and i have talked and talked about how dangerous these interactions can be yes. because you do just by the very definition of what is happening you disrobe right and then it's one-on-one -on -one. it's okay. you and them and then and it is definitely a he said she said because i don't know that anybody has a videotape they might right, right but i haven't right, heard about right, any of, of right. this yet Okay, so I have tried to read bits and pieces of all these cases, especially the last five or six of them that have been filed, the civil suits. And they are accusations, but they are packed with graphic details right. of what definitely qualifies as sexual assault. So right. we know that's what's been filed right. against Deshaun. Right. Eighteen other women are ready to, I guess, testify, right. if it came to that, right. that no, with me, he was nothing but a gentleman, right. right? Yes. I have no idea what to believe, but there is a magnitude that is built up here that you have acknowledged of just, just such a magnitude mm -hmm. of cases against. It's not two or three. That would be bad enough. It's up to 21, and now it's up to 18 on the other side as Rusty Harden does what he does so well. He is, uh, uh, he is one of the best. Yes. He is in the Johnny Cochran uh, galaxy mm -hmm. of of right. great trial lawyers right. who can de he defended Roger Clemens and Adrian Peterson and, and many celebrity right. clients. Right, and yet I don't know if these women, if they they, I don't think they voluntarily came forward. He said they voluntarily talked about it, but did he have to pay for their their uh, testimony? It's not yet. Oh yeah, testimony. of course, Skip. I mean, they're, they're witness. I mean, they yeah. probably they're, these women got to take out if they're going to come testify. Yeah, I got to miss time from work. You okay. paying for that? Okay, I got that. So, in the end, where does this leave Deshaun? Well, obviously, his reputation has been permanently stained. Yeah, we know that, absolutely. no matter how, how no this matter plays how come, out yeah. in court. And I'm assuming it puts all trade possibilities, at the very least, on hold. Absolutely. As people wait to see how the NFL plays this. Right. And you and I both discussed what an awkward position this thrusts the NFL into. Right. Because wh where does the truth right. lie? Right. And it's not to discredit any of these accusations right. and, and suits filed against right. him, but you need to, to dig deeper into what's the truth. And, and, and people will say, well, they suspended Zeke, but there was an investigation. The Ohio mm -hmm. State PD investigated Zeke. There were two police two, departments. Right. My, and, in Miami and my, Ohio. And, and they both found right. no cause for charge. Greg Hardy okay. was investigated and was charged. Mm -hmm. Right now, these are just civil litigation. Mm -hmm. So there is no there is no charges. This hasn't been turned over to the authorities so they can do their due diligence. Mm -hmm. This is just Tony Busby saying, I have this. Skip it. Let, look. When I said I think he's bluffing, I think what he's trying to do, he's just trying to whip it up. Because obviously these women came forward. Obviously these these women felt that something happened that shouldn't have happened or there was some inappropriate behavior going on with Deshaun. Yep. But what I'm saying Tony Busby is doing is that he's feeding this. He's just getting on IG. Anybody got him aside from Deshaun Watson? Anybody? That's what he's doing, Skip. Yep. I got it. I want you to turn. By the way, he is a celebrity attorney. Yes. He ran for mayor. He has run for other public offices in the state of Texas. Right. He is a grandstander. Right. He grandstands with a lot of this. And it did raise a red flag for me that he decided to say, well, I was going to give over, hand over the evidence right. to the Houston Police Department. Now I'm not. Okay. If, if, Skip, well, I don't want, I, I'm not saying that, but I'm just throwing that out there. Well, when you throw it out there, it's, Okay. What do you think people go? Well, I can see, but here's the thing. Who else can have jurisdiction over this if it didn't happen in another jurisdiction? Skip, I can't say well, this happened in California. I want to take the case to Georgia. Okay. So I'm, I'm with you. I do not doubt that there are 18 women who say he's nothing but a gentleman right. in our interactions. Right. It's hard for me to believe that 21 other massage therapists made their stories up well, or, or exaggerated them beyond belief. Well, maybe he's just like different touches. For me, I, once I find something that I like, Skip, I stick with it. 
I don't, Skip, I ain't gonna be lying to you. I haven't had chicken 39 different ways. And you know I love, that's, that's my favorite, that's my go-to oh, meal. I haven't had eggs 39 different ways. I like what I like and I'm gonna keep it moving. But to each his own. But like I said, Deshaun, you can't put yourself in that situation, bro. You just gotta, yeah. you, you gotta be mindful. And uh, this, is a, this, this, is a, this is a horrible situation. This is a horrible situation. There, 29, 29, 30, however many it's gonna be, Skip. Lives are forever changed. Now, I don't know how many of these women, they're probably going to be Jane Doe, A, B, C, D, all the way through. So we might not ever know their, their full identity. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson, that, that's Deshaun Watson. He walked down the street. Yep. Mm -hmm. Girl, stay, stay away. Hey, you want to stay away from him? Yep. And now what an awkward situation that you have for the Houston Texans because he has stated publicly and you have been out front <laughs> He spreading want, the message. Yeah. He, wants, he out wants out of Houston. Yeah. And now it's going to be very difficult for him to get, get traded. Yeah. And it's also going to be maybe difficult for Houston to play him because he well might get suspended. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All those things are probably true. Yep. No mercy. 49ers traded up to the third overall pick, and everyone assumed they had a plan. But that might not be the exact case. According to reports, San Francisco does plan on taking a quarterback with the selection, but there is disagreement as to which one they should take. The report says that Kyle Shanahan is interested in one player, while GM John Lynch is interested in another one. But the report also said that both Kyle Shanahan and his father Mike, quote, run the organization and they have final say. So, Shannon, are you surprised to hear this report that your old coach and his son are running the 49ers? Man, stop playing with me. Hell, not nah, surprised. <laughs> what do you mean? I've known Mike, I've known Mike since 1990. I've known Kyle since 1990. Hell, no. Nah. I, I bet you Kyle Shanahan's contract reads verbatim just like Mike Shanahan's contract read when he took over for the Denver Broncos. He has final say. You don't give a guy, I guarantee you, Matt Rule has final say. You don't give a coach skip six, seven years. It's like, well, somebody else has say over. No, uh-uh. When you give a guy that kind of control, John Lynch came to support Kyle Shanahan because Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan brought him in. Okay? That's, that's, that's how it works, Skip. Now, I give you the title. I'm going to let you have some say. <laughs> but when the rubber needs to meet the road and the decision needs to be made, guess whose voice will be heard? Mm. Mine. And... Guess who's going to get selected at quarterback? The guy that John Lynch won't or the guy that Kyle Shanahan won't? The guy that Kyle Shanahan won't. That's mm -hmm. who's going to be up on the center at some point in time for the 49ers. So I like that's, you, you put an S on Kyle Shanahan, the Kyle Shanahan's, because it's <laughs> he and dad. It, it right? is. Look, like I said, I, I know Mike Shanahan very well. I know Kyle very well. This is the way they, they operate. They're very strong personality. They're very demanding. But he knows in order to be successful, and that's what, especially, remember, Skip, what did he say when he learned about what his dad was in Washington? He didn't have that. And that's what happened. So what did he learn? If I'm going to get a head coaching job, oh, I'm going to have final say. It ain't going to be no Bruce Allen. Have say over me. That's not going to happen. He has final say. As a matter of fact, he has also only, J only the Yorks has more say in that organization than Kyle Shanahan. Mm. So whoever Kyle... Although when it comes to football, even the Yorks don't have final say. <laughs> no. I mean, no, the no, Yorks no. could not intervene and no, say, no, 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 we're no, going to no. take Justin Fields with the third no, overall no, no. pick, they, right? Skip, when you, when you turn it over to a guy and you give him six, seven years, and you turn it over and says, okay, do it. Whatever you think we need to do, this is what we're going to do. You turn it over to him. You don't intervene. And the Yorks have done just thus far, haven't intervened. Mm. But I am, Skip, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised mm. by this. Everybody's like, what? I thought John Lynch. No, you didn't. You didn't think that. I don't mm. know who told you that. Well, silly me, I thought it was 50-50. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I just, well, I never thought about it until I read Michael Lombardi's report about this. And the Shanahan's, the quote is, the Shanahan's run the 49ers, plural, Mike, your, your guy, your head yeah, coach, yeah. he sits up above yeah. in one of the boxes, yeah. and, and he has huge input yeah. into the game plan and the direction that yeah. the franchise is heading. And I'm cool with that because he can do it. If San Francisco were close, I'd be sitting right up there with you. You would be. <laughs> well, you would be. I would, Skip. I would. 
Okay, I don't know Kyle Shanahan. I do know Mike, but mm -hmm. I don't know Kyle. Mm -hmm. But I do know John Lynch. Mm -hmm. And I have the greatest respect for John Lynch. Yeah. He used to work for this network. Yeah. He was a fine upcoming analyst. Mm -hmm. We used to have him on this show occasionally. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I like the heck out of him. And I believe in his football mind yeah. because he was a not just a good player. He was a great yep. football player. Yep. Right. Yep. Stanford. Yeah. In the hall. I think he got in the hall this year, too. He's, he's in the hall, right? Yeah. I was just I think he got in this year. I was just doubting myself. But he's in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. OK, so he is with you in the Hall of Fame. And because of all that cachet, I just thought it was somehow kind of a 50-50. They loved each other and they, they could do. figure it out. You know, like, like we'll get our heads together and we'll come to a compromise that we want this or that. Okay, you know what my issue was with the trade-up? You better have a plan. If you're going to go all the way up there, you need to either get to two or one to make sure you can get your guy. Mm -hmm. Because right now you can't control your destiny. Right. right now you are dependent upon, you're, you're a prisoner of what... The Jets do. Well, uh, and uh, we can even go to Trevor Lawrence. We're, we're almost slam dunk sure yeah. that Trevor Lawrence is going to Jacksonville, but then it's the Jets. I don't know what they're going to do because the truth is, as we speak, the Jets might not know what they, they're going to do. Right. And they could be swayed by the wind of public opinion. They could hear all the buzz about Mac Jones and say, well, wait a second, maybe we should take Mac Jones mm -hmm. over Zach Wilson. Or, wait a second, people are, are going nuts about Trey Lance. Maybe we should think hard about taking Trey Lance. I think the thing is, Skip, is that Kyle Shanahan says, hold on, who's the quarterback with? Who's the guy that's going to be working closely with this guy? Okay. It needs to be the guy that I feel most comfortable that will understand and pick up my system, system can grasp my system, and I can work with. Okay. Yeah, the Kyle, is, Kyle is demanding now. I'm telling you, he's like his dad. <laughs> I play for his dad. And he should be. Yes. He should be. That's and, why they got to the Super Bowl. Yes. And yes. Especially, especially for that position, Skip. You know, like, we talk about it all the time. Now, he's not going to be openly free. He's not like B.A. But behind the scenes, Bruce Aarons, Bruce, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. behind the scenes, Skip, he's demanding of his quarterback. The expectations. Br Bruce is. No. Oh, Kyle, Kyle okay. is. Yeah. Bruce is also. Well, Bruce, he is. Bruce is Bru publicly Bruce verbalizes. Demanding. Yeah, Bruce verbalizes. Okay, okay, I got But it. I'm just okay. saying behind the scenes, Kyle is equally, if not more. Yep. So I got to get somebody that I'm comfortable with, Skip. And at the end of the day, I understand that, you know, and I'm sure there, there are a lot of times that he and John Lynch, they do collab. But on this situation, when it's something like this, the guy that has final say is probably going to win out. Because, Skip, if he goes and he picks that guy, <laughs> I don't want to ruin that friendship, John. But if I pick the guy that you want me to pick, yeah. and that guy don't work out, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> so you know what? So to keep our friendship going, I'm going to pick my guy. Okay, but what's shocking to me is that they just gave – the next year, and the next year's yeah. number one to go from, what was it, 12 to 3. But you said, Skip, if you're the quarterback that you believe in, there's not a price that's too steep. There's no price, but you better know you can get him at 3, whoever that guy is. Right. But according to Michael Lombardi, wait a second, John Lynch wants Y. You want X and he wants Y. Who, so, the best question, I don't know. Who is the guy that moved up? Okay, okay, they moved up. <laughs> So is this friction that's going to undo the front office? No. Probably not. No. But, no. but again, it's a little scary because you better be in lockstep on this one because you have just bet the whole future on this maneuver, right? I believe had not the situation arose with Deshaun, I believe Deshaun okay. was going to play for those draft picks. Okay, well, and he's not. So what's plan B? It well, better be a good plan B bordering on A, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because this is shocking to move up that high, but don't get to two, so you don't control your right. fate. Does he? But does he see Justin Fields as Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. Maybe. Well, they, they better hold their cards close to that vest. Well, you, I, I don't believe. I think we, we, neither one of us believe the Jets are going to take Justin Fields at two. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has uh, Zach Wilson penciled in at number two. So basically, number three is probably between Fields and Mac Jones. So the question well, is, a lot of people have the 49ers taking Trey Lance. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea what they really believe, right. but they better believe that they can get who they want right there. Right. And the other issue is Garoppolo. If if you really obviously they want to cut bait, I, they have sent a strong message. We don't believe in him. We're done with him. Well, if and, you move up that high. Yeah. yeah, yeah OK. We, <laughs> All right. But they're saying. We want our cake and eat it, too. We're going to play it. We feel strongly both ways. We're going to keep Jimmy G. Well, 
Why? Because if you really believed in your plan, Jimmy G would already have been traded. You would have just auctioned him off to the highest right. bidder. You don't want to cut him. You want to get something back. Now, for we him. Look, I guess they're going to play it like uh, uh, Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes. They're going to play it like Brett Favre. Now, I don't believe it'll be Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, where, where Jimmy Garoppolo is there three years. I believe this is more Alex Smith, uh, um, Patrick Mahomes, a one-year situation. Um, but but no. to me, you, you could help your cap so much if you'd already gotten Jimmy G out from under your salary cap, right? If you believe that you've got your guy, mm -hmm. because that's what your, your maneuver right. said, We've, we're going to get that guy, right. whoever that guy is. Well, if you believe in him that much, you know how I believe, yeah. just throw him into the fire. Just let him play. You, you can do it. You're good enough. You're the quarterback whisperer. I'm trying to think. No, Mike didn't do that. Mike, when he took, remember, he took Cutler. I think Cutler was 10. He had Jake Plummer. And he By the it, way, you don't love Jay Cutler. Jay Mike Shanahan traded up to take him. Traded him up to take him, yeah. Tenth overall now, out of Vanderbilt I, University. I felt that was the beginning of the end for Mike. Okay. Well, he did that. Was that a wrong move? Yeah, I like yeah. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler was terrible. He was not terrible. He terrible. got the, the Chicago Bears to the NFC Championship. And then rolled the bike the whole game. Uh, well, he played. <laughs> what was he going to? The Champs-Élysées? <laughs> <No>, he's... <laughs> He was going to the Tour de France. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, no, nah, Skip, I, I just think the thing is, is that in a situation like this, um, Kyle had, has to do this because at the end of the day, the coach, he's responsible. He's in charge. So, just like you okay. said, Bill Belichick is shopping for the grocery. You blame okay. Bill Belichick for the draft pick. Uh, uh, Casarios, he okay. ain't get no blame. You blame Coach Belichick. And by the way, Mike Shanahan preferred Kirk Cousins to RG3. He did. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember so that. So has Kirk paid off? Has he been that guy? I, I've never bought in. But he, he, he's, has he been great? No. No. Has he been really good? Yes, he's had moments that he's been great. But I think in all overall, you'd have to say, okay, well, he was right. He and uh, Kirk Cousins end up having a better career than RG3. Well, that was, <laughs> yeah, because of injury. Yeah. No mercy. Welcome back to Undisputed. We are now joined by four-time All-Star and current Memphis head coach Penny Hardaway, who has partnered with Polaris Slingshot in recognition of World Autism Awareness Day, a cause that is certainly near and dear to his heart. Penny, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I, I love the show. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, let's get into it, guys. Penny coached the Memphis Tigers to a 12-point win in the NIT Finals over Mississippi State this past weekend. And Memphis finished the year with a 20-8 and record in just the third season since Hardaway took over the coaching duty. So, Penny, congratulations, first of all. Oh, what an accomplishment. How close is your Memphis team to being a national power? No, thank you very much, first of all. It was big for our team, our school, and our city. Uh, I think we're very close. I think we're a couple of players away, maybe one player away with the nucleus that I have right now of uh, being a, a national powerhouse again. We're on our way. We're on our way. Mm. So, Coach, give us a, a thought about Gonzaga now, the just runaway favorite to win it all in college basketball. Shannon will vouch for that, his pick. Yeah. And yet yeah, we look at Gonzaga – and the top two scorers are a senior and a sophomore. Obviously, Jalen Suggs looks like he could be a one-and-done and, and an NBA star at some point. But the traditional one-and-done powerhouses, the Kentuckys and Dukes, have fallen on hard times. I'm looking at your Memphis roster from this past year. You win the NIT, and your top five scorers are a junior and four sophomores. So are we seeing that the better way, the quicker way, to become a power is with older veteran players as opposed to the one and done, you know, NBA bound superstar. Well, first of all, Gonzaga, welcome. <laughs> Incredible. I think they have two pros at every spot mm. at every position. They have two pros. So they're, they're really good. And to answer your question, I think it is more of a veterans, you know, style of playing on this level. I think young guys can, can win games. I just don't know if they can win championships yeah. and you got to have older guys on your team. I think the one and dones all going together. Kentucky's figured that out. Uh, Duke has figured that out. I mean, teams are, you got to be older. You need those veterans out there to kind of calm things down. And right now, Baylor, Houston, uh, Gonzaga, and these teams, they're, they're, they're older. Yep. But you're not going to turn a guy down. He's like, oh, look, Penny, I want to come to Memphis State. And he's a five-star guy. He says, but I'm going to be one and done. You're not going to turn him down, are you? 
Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to turn down a one and done, but you're not going to build your entire team. Okay. Around one and done. So right. I don't think I think that day might be over, but you're definitely going to take one and done players for sure. Mm. So just for our younger viewers, Penny, who don't remember you that well as a player, just for those who don't, you were LeBron to me before LeBron. And in your fifth year, you suffered a horrible knee injury, and it really took you out of the rest of your career. So can you reflect on how, how your career was going versus what you've seen LeBron and his all-time great durability be able to achieve as he goes into his 18th year? Well, first of all, Skip, you put me in hot cotton. That's my guy, LeBron. Man, I love that guy. He is – I don't really know what to say about him, man. He's, he's phenomenal. And, you know, obviously my career was going on a – on a, on a plateau before I got injured. And when I got injured, I, I was as explosive as I needed to be. But watching LeBron is, is almost incredible. His IQ of the game, his durability, his, uh, his will to win, his, uh, his leadership, his understanding of the game, when to turn it on, when to allow guys to play. I mean, what more can I say? I just think that he's phenomenal, man. And just to still be rolling at his age right now with a freak injury, you know, a couple of weeks, I mean, a week ago or so uh, that derailed him, but he doesn't get injured. He doesn't lose, and he's just, you know, he's the man. But for me, I just, I just look at him on any team that he's on, you know, they, they're a favorite to win it uh, no matter what. How did your game compare to his? Well, I think we both had the vision. Obviously, we were matchup problems. I was a matchup problem at the point guard being 6'7", and most of the guards were way smaller than me. Um, uh, the versatility, you know, with the basketball, of understanding the IQ of understanding where guys are supposed to be at all times, making the right pass at the right time, getting guys going that you know they need to get going, that uh, they're going to help you win the ball games. It's just understanding every detail at all time, at every minute of all the 48 minutes while you're out there on the court. Penny, you played in the era with Michael Jordan. You were smack dab when he came back, um, and, and you beat him in 95 when he first got back, and then they run off a, uh, three straight. And the comparison is always going to be there between LeBron and Mike. What do you see as some of the similarities, and what do you see are the biggest differences between the two? Uh, I say the similarities, uh, they're both winners, for sure. Uh, whatever team you put them on, you're going to win. Obviously, like to me, Michael Jordan had that more aggressive mentality of he wanted to just take your heart out. He, he just kind of wanted to just break your heart out and just feed it to you. And LeBron is just going to be more of the, the orchestrator of it. Like, I can, I, I, can, I can take your heart out, and I can also – and my teammates had to take your heart out. Michael Jordan wasn't going to allow his teammates to take your heart out. He was going to do it. <laughs> but LeBron is so great at making everybody feel like they're the man, you know, even though he knew that he was. And Michael wasn't caring about that. He was just going to get the, I'm going to get the win, and I don't care what you feel about it or anybody else feels about it. Hmm. So wait a second. I think you just said, Coach, that Jordan is the GOAT. Mm -hmm. you, right? I didn't hear that, Penny. I heard that. Did you hear that? Did you say that, Penny? I didn't hear that. <laughs> You know, honestly, I hate to compare the guys, but right now, to me, Michael is a GOAT, and LeBron is not far behind. That's just my opinion. That's good enough for me. I'm sorry, Shane. Oh, is it? <laughs> That's good enough for me. It's not I good mean, enough you, for you. I mean, you say he's not far yeah, behind. Man, LeBron is my favorite player. LeBron is my favorite player, so it's, 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 you know, it's tough for me. Penny, had you and Shaq stayed together, how many championships could you have done what Kobe and Shaq did? Were you guys on the cook? Barring the injury, bar, obviously all bets off, you get injured, that, that derailed everything. But had you and Shaq stayed together and you not get injured, could you and Shaq have been Kobe and Shaq? Yeah, for sure. And there's no knock. Kobe, unbelievable warrior, was destined for greatness. Um, great player uh, up there as far as the goats, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but, yeah, I know that if I would have stayed healthy and Shaq would have stayed in Orlando, we would have at least had one or two championships. I'm, I'm sure of that. When you got injured, did you know it was going to be as debilitating or did you think you were just going to bounce back? What, what, what the, the injury, what was so significant about it that, that caused you to not to be the penny that we remember pre-injury? Man, that injury derailed me uh, pretty badly. Uh, but what happened was I had a microfracture before microfractures were, were really – you know, big. Right. It was like I was one of the first guys to get a microfracture. When I got the microfracture, I played with a torn meniscus the entire series against the Spurs and the Lakers the year that they won, the first the first championship that they won together in 2000. And my knee was, I took a quarter zone shot before every game pretty much just to make it to the, through the game. And after the season, 
the doctor told me that he was going to try a surgery that he thought that would prolong my career and extend my career. And it really kind of, I agreed to it, found out later that I probably should not have done it. And uh, that's what just took me out, man. It went the bone on bone in that area and it, uh, it shut me down. Hmm. So what gives you more satisfaction, coaching or playing? Because I know it leaves you frustrated. You didn't get to finish your career with a flourish. Yeah, but honestly, coaching, because I'm pouring back into young men yeah. uh, with more than just on the court and off the court. I enjoy playing. Uh, I love the game of basketball, but basically pouring into these young men is, is to me, is more fun than, you know, than when I play because I feel like I'm affecting lives that way. Mm. Penny, there's a saying there in the profession that says those that can do, those that can't teach. But you could do, and you became a teacher, you became a coach. Why is it so difficult for great players to also be great coaches? I think it's difficult for great players to be great coaches because of their mindset of they think everybody's supposed to be perfect. <laughs> and in this game, you got to understand how to, how to treat the kids. You got to be, you got to wear a lot of hats. You got to be, you can't be hard on them. You got to be, you got to be caring. You got to be understanding. And that's where, that's not how we were taught. You know, in our old school days, it said you just do. Right. And I think that that's what happens with great players. They want you to just do, and they're not trying to meet people, meet the players 50-50. It's not one-sided. And that's what's so difficult about great players coaching and trying to be successful. Mm. So you understand that uh, he's not Penny Hardaway. He's not LeBron James. It's okay. I'm going to have to, you know, like you said, some guys you can get on. Some guys you're like, hey, bro, come on, man. I, I need you in this situation. Some guys you be funny with. Some guys you just like, bro, what, what are you doing? Right. You have to be that way. You cannot be old school to where it's ruling the iron fist. You'll lose your entire team. Mm -hmm. And I see that happening. That's happening all the time. You have to be stern, but you have to be fair, but you have to also have to let guys know that you love them and that you care about them. And that's, that's what they really want. Mm. So back to the one and dones, you very briefly had a one and done a year ago for three games. You had James Wiseman with Golden State now, second overall pick. He's had his ups and he's had his downs. How do you evaluate his progress so far? I evaluated a guy that I had in high school his junior year and made huge strides. I left his senior year and he played really well. Coming into college, he was only allowed to play three games and he didn't stay here long. He ended up leaving, going to Miami and, and, and working out and training and getting ready, getting drafted and, been, and playing within two months or three months. I look at a kid that really has the potential to be great, but just needs the time to learn how to do it. And that's what he's going through right now. Just, it's, it's a learning curve. He's young. He just turned 20 years old. He, he's not had enough basketball yet to be as dominant as he wants, wants to be, but he's going to be very dominant. And the nerves kick in. Uh, the pressure kicks in of wanting to do well, and he just needs more basketball in his belt. He's going to be fine. Mm. Are we asking too much of these young players now? Because it seems like now we ask the young players to come in and automatically contend for a title. Are we asking too much of the Zions or the young Jason Tatum or these young players and not letting them mature? Because I think Magic Johnson ruined it. Because Magic come in as a rookie, he win the title, <laughs> and then he comes in and wins the NBA title. Now they expect everybody to do that, Penny. Magic was special. Another <laughs> one of my favorite players. But honestly, I think we are putting too much pressure on these kids because – They've been allowed to have things their way for so long, and then you pressure them to do something different. They, they buck the system. They don't respond properly to it. And if you want to get the best out of them, you got to allow them to go at their pace. I mean, you can push them, but you got to still allow them to grow. All right, Penny, thank you so much for joining us. And it's just so special to see you having such success coaching and enjoying thank it. You. And uh, congrats to Memphis again. And everyone, please light it up blue by wearing blue tomorrow and use the hashtags light it up blue and World Autism Awareness Day. Thank you again for joining us. Appreciate it, Penny. I appreciate it. No mercy. Saturday, MLB is back as the Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Then Mookie Betts and the reigning World Series champion Dodgers take on the Rockies. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. Eastern on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. Well, get this, guys. Robert Kraft spoke with reporters during the annual owners meetings and admitted some of his team's shortcomings. When it comes to the draft, Kraft says the Patriots have not, quote, done the greatest job the last few years, and I really hope and I believe I've seen a different approach this year. Some strong words. Shannon, did, did Kraft just call out Belichick with uh, poor drafting? No, he told the truth. I mean, everybody knows that, Skip. And uh, what did I say about what he did? Mr. Kraft allowed Coach Belichick 
to erase some of the mistakes that he made in the draft. You draft two tight ends in the third round. You trade up to get one. What do you do in free agency, Skip, to make yep. you made a mistake? You sign two free agents, the two best free agents at, at that position. You sign both of them. You sign Nikhil Harry two years ago in the first round. What do you do in free agency? You go out and get two wide receivers, admitting you made a mistake. You draft. Who do you go out and get in free agency on the defense? Matt Judon. You're saying what we did in the draft over the years, we have not been able to find an edge rusher. So Mr. Kraft allowed you, like he said, I had to scramble to get that kind. Never had to, you know, come up with that kind of capital mm. that quick. So he's acknowledging. Mm. Coach Belichick is acknowledging by going into free agency, getting uh, uh, positions that he just drafted within the last two to three years mm -hmm. and already trying to replace them. He's admitting mm -hmm. he's made a mistake. This is not a shot. It's fact. So I, I, I don't look at it as anything else. He made a mistake. Now, normally, good thing Mr. Kraft just said that, and he still got a job. Mm -hmm. I think because Coach Belichick is so is, is so grandfathered in with what he's accomplished, Skip, yep. he's going to be there for a minute. I think Coach Belichick is one of those guys you walk away when you kind of want to unless something you do something morally corrupt. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't think, you know, is Coach Belichick in jeopardy of losing his job? No. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Kraft, all he did was acknowledge what I've been trying to tell you. Coach Belichick made some mistakes in the draft. Mr. Kraft allowed him to go spend his money in free agency to correct those mistakes. Mm. So Robert Kraft just laid it right on the line. Yeah. He said you win through the draft. Yeah. You don't win doing what they just did in free agency. He just told you I had to do it. Right. I had to correct our market because yeah. the market said you got to plunge because you're in trouble. Right. Right. You could add one here or there, but not knowing but doing what no. they do. He just put his head coach on a hot seat that he deserves to be sitting on. He's just saying, we can't do this again. We got to draft better. Right. And he said, I think we are going to draft. He, it, it's almost like he, he relit the fire under <laughs> Coach Belichick. And I didn't see Coach Belichick at the Alabama Pro Day. He's out there gallivanting with his buddy Nick Saban, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. You know how I feel about Belichick, and this is more proof positive to me. I just boil it down to Belichick minus Brady equals facade. It, it was all about Brady to me. I'm up to 80% Tom Brady. <laughs> I, I was thinking that, that old Texas expression, big hat, no cattle. I think Belichick is now big hat, no cattle, because he, he hasn't been able to draft. He got a few head of cattle. It, it, here and there, but <laughs> listen, that cupboard or, or that corral or whatever you want to call it, it was bare. He might not have a ranch, but he just got a, he got a, few, he got a few head of cattle right Okay, now. and even... Even Mr. Kraft, he's he's trying to defend Cam Newton. He just said, I just don't think he had the proper weapons last year. Well, we we agree. Uh, right. Yeah, we got it. Right. Brady said, I, I got nobody. Right. I got nobody who can separate. Right. So in the end, I even go back to one of my all-time favorite movies. I don't even know. Do you know Wizard of Oz? I do know okay. Wizard of Oz. All right. So what's the essence of that movie is that the great and powerful Wizard of Oz, the guy you see up on the screen, <laughs> Well, Toto, the little Dorothy's little dog, pulls back the curtain, and what what do we see? We see this desperate little man just pulling the levers as fast as he can. Well, that's Bill Belichick now. He's pulling the levers because he's not what he's appeared to be. He, what you say? He's saying. not because he lost the quarterback he had for 20 years, who canceled out a lot of his swings and misses. Right. It just didn't matter after a while because Brady would figure out because he he, he was so dominant, a leader in the locker room, he would show everybody the Patriot way. Right. And we have to do this to achieve that. And we'll win in spite of that guy. Right. You got to put up with that guy. And I'm not discounting what Belichick did for the defense because I think he is a supreme defensive mm -hmm. head. Uh, he, he, he's just like a head coach who was the defensive coordinator. Right. That's what he focused on. And he was very good at it. But he, he got spoiled because he could get away with doing it with his cogs and and the greater they got, the more Super Bowls they won together, mm -hmm. I think much more because of Brady than right. Belichick, then he could just put any old cog in the defense and it would work. Right. You could throw Kyle Van Oy in there and you say, look at Kyle Van Oy, right. he can play this defense. Right. And then he goes to Miami and they're like, he, he's, we, we just way overpaid right. for right. Kyle Van Oy. Right. Get out of here. Let me Go back what, to New England. Do you, think, do you think Phil Jackson thinks it's the triangle or the players that he had in that system? I bet you Phil says it's a triangle. Yeah, he's so different than Belichick because he thought he was the beginning and the end of all the Bulls' success. Right. Started, ended with him. Right. But he was the 
instead of the Zen master, he was more of the spin master. But but he got you could make a case that he has three of the top ten players of all time. Well, he he just did in, in, in that system. So right. was it really your system of those or those three guys that you had in that system with Scottie Pippen also? Yeah, it was those guys, <laughs> so, obviously. And, and, I think and by the way, Phil didn't invent the triangle. No, right. Text Text Winter Winter sort of did. Right. But he borrowed it and then perfected it. Right. And he believed in it. Yes. And he, his, his greatest strength, Phil, was that he could convince his superstars to buy into what he believed in. That's, what That's Coach hard. Bel That's what Coach Belichick did with Tom Brady. He convinced Tom, yes, and so. Tom convinced other guys yeah, to did. buy into his system, Skip. Yep. So maybe it's not what you what it appeared to be. It was just that Tom was able to convince guys, and that's what you got to do. Convince the best guy that this is the right approach, and then everybody else will fall in line. Okay, but Tom Brady was raised by a strong father yeah. who taught him whatever that head coach right. says at any level, right. you do what he right. says. He's the one in control. Right. He's in command. Right. Do what he says. Right. And after a while, Brady says, okay, I'll do what he says, but... I don't love what he's talking but about. But that's the old way of thinking. Yeah. You heard what Penny said. Yeah. It used to be the iron fist and that's the way you do it. But now if you do it that way, you lose the team. <laughs> lose the team. So, uh, look, and you hear what Mr. what Mr. Kraft said about also about Tom. He says, well, yeah, we could have slapped the tag on him, but that wouldn't have been fair. But then what you could have done, you didn't have to slap the tag on him. You could have signed him to an extension. When you gave him the $8 million before the season, you could have gave him a two-year extension. Okay. But it wasn't until that you realized Tom was going to leave that you tried to coax him back. Well, we'll do whatever they give you, we'll give you that. Okay. But it was too late. Okay, so while I loved what Robert Kraft did to Belichick, he just called him it out is. and said, this will not continue. No, no, no. But I don't love what he did because this is spin doctors, spin control right. about why Brady. Brady left, right. because he's saying, oh, if a man gives me 20 years and six Super Bowls, there's no way I'm going to exercise my right to keep him because he wanted to leave. The inference there is Tom wanted out and I'm not going to slap the tag on him. No. No. Your head coach wanted him out right. and was trying to push him right. out <laughs> as early as 2017. Right. And finally, Tom Brady said, uh, dad, you know, daddy, you know, you're letting him run amok because we don't have any talent left. Right. Why would I want to stay playing for him when the cupboard is bare? Right. But but I'll stay, but he doesn't want me to stay. Right. That was the whole crux of the argument. And well, they, don't tell me that you could have kept it. It's the same thing as Aaron Rodgers. Skip, yeah. they could have, instead of just giving him that bonus, yep. they could have said, okay, Aaron, we're going to add two more years and we're going to give you this. So therefore, moving forward, it eases your mind that you're not a lame duck. Okay. That's what the Patriots could have done. Instead of just giving them $8 million to make his salary $23 million, you could have said, here, Brady, Tom, we're going to add two more years. We're going to give you this, and then we'll reevaluate mm -hmm. this after year 22. Yep. But they didn't do that. Okay. And Tom says, hold on, wait a minute. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, remember what happened after the 2017 season Super Bowl, in which yeah. Brady threw for 505 and mm -hmm. they lost 41 to 33 yeah. because Belichick didn't play Malcolm Butler. Right. I'll never figure that out. But he did give up 41 to Nick Foles. Correct. And Brady was out of his mind after that game. And he came out here to a conference and he was interviewed by Jim Gray, who asked him, do you feel that the organization gives you the appropriate gratitude? Do they pay you the appropriate gratitude? And he said, I plead the fifth. Right. What? You plead the fifth? Right. Are you happy, Tom? Jim Gray asked him. I, I have my moments. Well, he was completely unhappy yeah. because he knew at the trade deadline his head coach wanted to trade to get, him yeah. or just get rid of That's him. Right, he did. Okay. He, he, he tried to. And like I said, Skip, it should have never gotten You shouldn't have had to put the franchise tag on him because it should have been you extended him. If you wanted him, Skip, all the other years you wanted him, you extended him. You did. All the other players that you want, you extend them. It's only when you, and get to the end, it's like, nah. I mean, you had Chandler Jones. You didn't want to pay him. You, you had the best defensive lineman that you've probably that you've ever drafted, and you got rid of him after one incident. That but is true. He, but see, Skip, he had that cachet. When you he win like cachet. he does, yep. Who questioned it? Well, he, you know, Coach Belichick. He got six championships, but Coach Belichick is not above reproach. He's been terrible. He drafted one Pro Bowl player outside of Jamie Collins. That's a punter mm -hmm. since what 2012, 2013. That's correct. Okay, so. If, if you look hard at what, what happened over the last three years, Robert Kraft kept siding with Tom until the bitter end. He and did. then at the, at the last second, after they had lost a home playoff right. game, and you were very critical of them, to Tennessee at right. home, and it ended 
ignominiously with Brady right. throwing a pick six to end the game. It was already a loss. But Robert Kraft finally said, I'm going to go with my head coach here. I believe that was the tape that Coach Belichick took to Mr. Kraft's office. Yeah. You he see what happened? He's, he's, as LeBron says, he's washed. Right? I, believe, I believe that's the tape that he took, Skip. Yep. He's washed. And he just went and won a Super Bowl for the sucking ears. And Brady said, I'm watching with them guys that you got me playing with. Yep. <laughs> Give me some guys that I can play with. Let me show you what I can do. That is correct. <laughs> and he went and won a Super Bowl. Yep. So Coach Belichick said, I'm going to get him back, though. That's what Coach Belichick said. Well, when he, is he? When he moved that he got, he said, watch me move. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold on. You know we play y'all, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, I got, we, So we, you're a we for New we, we got, we got, we, I'm going to be a we that week because uh. we got cases on that one. Oh, <laughs> hey, hold on. I think the Cowboys got the Patriots, too. Yeah. They do. They do. Oh, that's how I get all my cases back. In two games, I get all my cases back. <laughs> In two games, just like that, we're going to be dead even. So Todd McShay has the Patriots and Bill Belichick trading up to take Justin Fields. So could it be Justin Fields as the starter or will it be Cam for another year? Justin Field, Field of Dreams, Coach Belichick yep. going to the playoffs. <laughs> Can you say it with me? Playoffs. Justin Can you say it with Fields, me? Field Five of cases. <laughs> oh, yep. okay. I, I can't believe that you have so much faith in the Patriots, Shannon. Yeah. I'm going to let you Cole do that. Belichick. I'm going to let you get those dues back some way, somehow. No mercy. J.J. Reddick did not hold back after the Pelicans traded him to the Mavericks. The point guard said that he requested a trade in November so he could be closer to his family in Brooklyn and that the Pelicans front office told him they would make sure he would end up in the Northeast, which obviously did not happen. So after the trade, he said, quote, I don't think you're going to get honesty from that front office, objectively speaking. Shannon, how concerned should Zion, Lonzo, and really the rest of the Pelicans' young players be about this situation? Skip, yeah, it's just a reminder that the team's going to do what's in the best interest of them. Has J.J. Has JJ not seen what happened to Andre Drummond? They sat him down for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Skip, they, the, uh, uh, the OKC Thunder just sat Al Horford, said we're going to sit him down because we're going year young, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to move him in the offseason. Yep. So, J.J., you've been in this business long enough. You know they're going to do what's in the best interest. I could, let's see, I could buy him out, let him go where he wants, or I could trade him to Dallas and get something for him. I could give it away, or I could sell it. Hmm. More times than not, people are going to sell the item. I, every once in a while, Skip, people get generous and just give it away. But, but, if David Griffin told the man, I will try to accommodate you. If I trade you, I'm going to trade you to the Northeast, or we'll buy you out and you can go where you want to go. If he gave him his word, honor your word. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, that's all a man has. Yep. All he got, Skip, is his word. And if your word, if a man is, if, if, if your word ain't about that, I ain't got no use for you. Mm. So, uh, JJ, I get it. You, you thought you were going to get an opportunity to go back north to be close to your family. Um, I, I think you read he got a son starting kindergarten. Or kindergarten does, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yeah. And so, Griff, if you gave the man your word, just honor that. Yep. If you didn't, okay, I, I got no problem with that. But don't tell me something and then don't follow through with it. Okay, I hear everything you just said, and, and I agree with the way you interpreted all of these events. Mm -hmm. I am, as you know, a big Zion fan, and I'm a big Lonzo fan, mm -hmm. and I want what's best for them. I want them to be in an organization that is headed in the right direction, right. that is well-run and well-respected. Right. This was troubling to me mm -hmm. because... J.J. Redick is respected around the league. He he's in his 15th season, and he's been around. He's done all that. He's been on good teams. He's been on bad teams. He, he knows how you play the game on and off the court. Right. And he says flat out that Griff, as he calls him, David Griffin, said, come on down for a month at the start of the season, and if you still want to be traded, I give you my word, according to J.J. from David right. Griffin, I'll get you to a situation that you will like. Well, obviously, he voiced his uh, preference to, to, to at least get me in the neighborhood where on an off day I can drive to Brooklyn. Get, the Philadelphia would, would have worked. Philadelphia, there was some rumor of that. Yeah. You know, maybe Go Boston. back to Philly because that's where he came from. Yeah, was... that's where he came from. Okay. So now he just flat out says he did not honor his word. David Griffin says, well, I wanted to get him to the best situation. And as an aging player, says David Griffin, 
I wanted to at least get him to a contending team. Skip, that is what, that, that what J.J. said. What he asked J.J. For. said, okay. get me back to the Northeast. Right. If you Skip, I don't know who else is in the Northeast, Boston or that's maybe some. I said Boston. B- Boston yeah. or Well, That's what he said. He didn't say nothing about no contending situation. Yeah. Now, obviously, LaMarcus Aldridge, if you could have traded him, he says he wants to be in a contending situation. Uh, uh, Blake Griffin wants mm-hmm. to be in a contending situation. But that's not what J.J. Reddick said. Yeah. J.J. Reddick said... Something that's more important to me than being in a contending situation yeah. is being close to my family, at least driving distance on a day off. On his day off. Obviously, the dream would be the Brooklyn Nets. You mean to tell me he can't but, drive from Dallas to Brooklyn a day? No, no, probably not. <laughs> not on an off day. Maybe three off days. <laughs> but, but obviously, the Brooklyn Nets have Joe Harris, who's just shooting the lights out. Oh, he, got, he went crazy in the just fourth quarter. shooting the lights night. out. And so that's J.J. Redick, a younger J.J. Right. Redick. A little better overall player than JJ is right. at this stage and right. age. Yes, and they got Landry Shamit coming off the bench, and that's sort of the same guy. Yeah. So T- okay. and, uh, and TLC, you got, you got it. So they, they that's not a need for right. them. So that didn't work. And Lee Tyler Johnson and Tyler Johnson. That they can. They got shoot. enough three point shooters now. Whew. Whew. So JJ concludes. I don't think you're going to get honesty from that front office, man. That is a shot fired from yeah. a credible source, mm-hmm. and it's got to give pause to Zion, mm-hmm. Lonzo, B.I., well. Josh Hart, and anybody down the line who might want to play with, choose to play in New Orleans. Right. Well, they got a lot of draft picks, so you could just draft the kids to come there and they won't have any choice. But right. if there's any free agents to be had, I, I don't know how and, that's going to It ain't drafting the guys, it's being able to keep the superstars. And that's all. You, you see OKC, okay, they drafted a bunch of them. They had three of them. Yeah. Well, by the way, Lonzo could walk after this right. year. Right. And he says, I'm pledged, he's pledged allegiance to this organization. Right. So David Griffin has pretty wide respect around the league. But, but how did he earn and claim that respect? He was the GM for... Goat, Goat J. Your guy. And it was in the Eastern Conference, the Eastern Conference. Mm-hmm. And so it was pretty easy to make all the magic moves when you got LeBron as your centerpiece, right. especially in right. the Eastern Conference at that point. Right. So I'm not sure I'm going to buy into what he did for the Cavaliers. Well, as he said, well, what LeBron was doing was unsustainable. Well, let me see what you're going to do with Zion. Ah. Let me see if you're going to get pieces to complement Zion. Like LeBron says, I need pieces to complement me what I do. I need shooters. So I'm going to see what you're going to get for Zion. What you going to get, Skip? Probably mm. shooters. Okay. Do you need another big body to clog up the lane from Zion? No. You're going to probably put shooters around he and B.I. Okay. So what move did David Griffin make? in the offseason that was extremely troubling to me, he chose Stan Van Gundy to coach this young team on the verge. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think they're going to listen to Stan Van at, the, at his stage and age because he just annoys you after a while. Mm-hmm. And again, he had Dwight early and they sort of made peace with each other and mm-hmm. they had some good they had times some good and moments. moments yeah, right? Went to the NBA Finals. Okay, they did. But, but in this case... I just don't know if he's the right fit for a team that is now 21 and 25. Trust me, I watch them every night. They're must-see. They're they way be better, better than, than 21 and 25. They just are. And I know they need some veteran presence. I thought J.J. was going to be that guy, and apparently he's just rejected the whole mix right now, mm-hmm. and he wanted out even before pretty, this year. Pretty, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. <laughs> he wanted out. So you chose the wrong coach to me, and – And the coach spoke up yesterday and said, hey, you know, our responsibility is to Gail Benson and to the organization. That supersedes all, said Stan Van Gundy. Well, I'm not sure how that's going to now play in the locker room because they're going to be looking side-eyed at the coach like, oh, so we can't trust anything you tell us because in the end, you're just going to do what's best for our organization. Exactly. You can't do that. Well, don't tell me that, then. Don't tell them that. That's all you got to do. Just say, hey, we're going to do what's in the best interest of the team. But don't tell a man you're going to do X and then you turn around and do Y. And then when they look at you funny, you're like, what? What? You just told me you was going to do this and you did that. So now I can't trust you. I got to tell you, I, I watched the heck out of this team. They just look troubled to me. They don't look right. There, there's something missing in the flow, the chemistry, or, or just the camaraderie of the team. Mm-hmm. They don't look like they're having fun playing basketball together. And maybe it starts at the top down to the head coach. Mm-hmm. And, and now this is, whew. Well, they better start winning some games. Yep. 
I don't know. I don't know how long they're gonna give Stan Van Gundy with that. I mean, you know, like you said, they got a lot of draft picks. Yep. But you have all the draft picks you want. You don't win no games. Then what? Hey, well, you asked Penny Hardaway, are we putting too much pressure on these young players? Okay, maybe a little. But listen, Zion is doing extraordinary yeah. things that should contribute to winning a few more games. Well, let's say Zion is a generational talent. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. I, don't, I don't think you can put too much stage, uh, okay. pressure on a generational okay. talent. Okay, all right. A LeBron James, a Magic yep. Johnson, Larry Bird, Kevin Durant. No, nah, I don't think you can put too much pressure on them. Okay, so B.I. made an all-star team. Zion's made an all-star team. Lonzo has come of age right before your very eyes and, and pledged allegiance. And Josh Hart should get some submission for six, six men of the year. year. He does. Dude, come I, out I the agree. bench and get me to getting 12, he 15 does. rebounds. And he plays his He plays hard, man. Ooh. He fights. Okay, so you got all that going and you're 21 and 25. Something is wrong. Yeah. Ugh. I guess the way, I guess it's uh, unsustainable, Griff. You mm. know, because, you know, LeBron, it was unsustainable. <laughs> yeah. No mercy. After Universal Champion Roman Reigns' controversial victory at Fastlane, what could this now mean for Edge in the main event of WrestleMania? It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, tomorrow night on Fox. Buccaneers owner Joel Glazer said he has always admired Tom Brady from afar, but is even more impressed after being able to see his work ethic up close. He told reporters Brady, quote, works harder than anybody I've ever seen. His leadership is unbelievable and his relationship with everybody and just the person he is, the whole package. Shannon, does Brady get too much credit for being a hard worker? I mean, considering the Glazers are billionaires, I want to know how hard, how many people he's been around that work really hard, Skip. He kind of got a big been, been sheltered from that kind of hard work, that ground labor. Mm -hmm. Skip, look, to make it to this level, you have to work ex extremely hard. Um, he's taken care of his body. He's done it longer. He's done it as good, if not better, than anybody has that's ever played this game. There's no questioning that. Uh, his work ethic, I don't think anybody's ever questioned Tom Brady's work ethic. I, not to my knowledge. Now, maybe, maybe at some, maybe at Michigan, maybe that's why he didn't play or high school or something. But since Tom Brady has become the Tom Brady that we know, no one has ever questioned his prep. Yep. Be it classroom, be it in the gym, be it his football on the field. Nobody's questioned that. I just, I, I don't know what, what they try to make him mythical. I mean, I, I don't, I don't get where they're going with this, Skip. What, what, what else needs to be said? The guy's won seven championships. He's still playing at an elite level. Uh, he's about to be what? 44, 43, 44? Four. 44. Mm -hmm. He's about to be 44. August third. August third. He'll be 44. Just coming off his seventh Super Bowl, playing at an extremely high level. What else do we need to say? I mean, do we want? Do we? Are we trying to say hoodie? We trying to make turn to be? What, what, what is it, Skip? Mm. What, what do they want everybody? Do they want all 335 million people in America to say Tom Brady is the greatest all at once at unison and then we'll be done with this? Mm. That's a good idea, actually. Jeez. They have a Tom Brady moment. <laughs> I, I believe that's what they want. Everybody holds hands <laughs> all around the world. All maybe? around the world. Yeah. Tom Brady is great. I wonder <laughs> if we could hear that. That would work. <laughs> I, I may proclaim. I, I may. Oh, you have, that. oh yeah. you have a day, a Tom yeah. Brady day. It's just a moment. Okay. It just takes a second, right? <laughs> just to get it over with. To get it over with. Yeah. And then, your, we, then we'll be done with it. And you might be the only human who will not join hands, right? Lips are zipped. Okay. So, first of all, anyone from the Glazer family who's owned the sucking ears for years and years yeah. to say he's the hardest worker I've ever seen. Well, I don't know in the football context how many hard workers they had yeah. over the years in Tampa. They have Obviously, a good one. They, they, Brooks they, is. Okay, that one, Lynch. That, that, yeah. For a while. Yeah. They, they had that moment. Because uh, Mr. Carver House owned it first. Mm -hmm. I think they, they might have brought it like in the 2000s, right, Skip? Mm hmm. Yeah, Glazers. The Glazers, yes. yeah. Yeah, they weren't, all, they weren't the original owners of the no, Buccaneers. they were if I'm not. not mistaken, Hugh Culver House was. Yes, that is correct. Okay, what have I always told you about Tom Brady? He is the greatest overachiever in sports mm -hmm. history because you were the first to say, not the greatest athlete. No. Ugliest 40-yard dash mm -hmm. in the history of the combine was run by this man. Right. He was drafted late round by Montreal to be a catcher out of high school. So he does have that going on. So he has some all-around ability. Right. But you might not classify that or qualify that as athletic ability. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we, we know that at Michigan, he couldn't even permanently win the starting job. Correct. 
Is that the coaching staff's fault or his fault? I, I don't know, but he couldn't even win the job, right. which is why he fell, he, even off his Orange Bowl, which was spectacular it's against a, Alabama. It, it was special. Mm-hmm. It, it was. Yeah, right. But that was maybe the only really right. special game he played in his right. whole college career. Mm-hmm. And off that one game, he managed to get drafted in the sixth round. Right. And it, it took a, a fateful injury to Drew Bledsoe for him to even get a chance. If that injury does not happen, I don't know what happens to Tom Brady. Right. Is it possible we don't know who Tom Brady is? It's he just possible. became some bounce-around backup quarterback? It's possible. Is it possible he would have gotten cut? Because, it, it, again, Charlie Weiss, who was the coordinator, said there was, you know, we, we had a whole bunch of quarterbacks in right. that first camp, and he did distinguish himself and caught Charlie Weiss's eye early on. Right. Because of his hard work. Right. He was staying after practice right. throwing if to anybody who would catch football right. from him. Okay, so what, what doesn't he get enough credit for, in my view, is that he did this with, with obsession. And, and it's hard to quantify for, for people. When, when most pro football players, and you've known a whole bunch and I've covered a whole mm-hmm. bunch, when they say, I work hard, well, they usually just work hard within the confines of the day yeah. at the practice. Yeah, field. but Skip, my grandfather had a saying, he said, boy, don't mistake habit for hard work. Okay. He said, a lot of times people do things over and over and think they're working hard. No, you do that out of habit. You go at the same okay, time, you it. do the same thing. Okay. But are you really working hard? Okay. So Tom Brady is beating you as much with his mind, right. his vision, right. as with his ability. Right. So he's taking it home every night, and he's working late right. into the night. Right. He, he is a tape watcher. He's working hard, Skip, in a different way than what you would think. That is correct. He ain't lifting, squatting 500 pounds. No. He's not bench pressing or pulling no. sleds or flipping tires. He's working hard. He's mentally training as opposed to more physically training. Okay, because he is addicted to right. tape watching. Yes. And, and what did you tell me? You hit 35. Yeah, yeah, at some done. point, you just said, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. done. Your, your I'm body's done. starting to betray you, but, but you're, you're just getting tired yeah. of the drudgery that you, that you have to go through yeah. to prepare for game day. Right. If you could just get to game day with all, all that drudgery, all right. those meetings, all that film watching, you'd say, ah, maybe I could deal with it. And the guys this. come to the sideline now, Skip, and they're looking at the tablets. Man, I want to look at it because we had the steel shot, Skip, and yeah. I just want to okay. That's what they had. Okay, oh, I'm okay, done. I got it. But I ain't, Skip, I got I'm not going to be slipping. Yeah. slipping okay, I got it. Okay. I ain't going to do that the whole game. Okay. So you can say they're embellishing, but we saw in Tom versus Time, their documentary. Right. Brady's at home. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and he's watching some tape of, of a Cincinnati game from five years before. And he's calling Josh McDaniels saying, I just saw this. Can you believe they were doing this then? We could do this to counteract right. Right. that. Right. And he's like a little kid excited. Okay. You better be able to keep that same energy right. into age 44, and right. he does. And he does. And that was the thing that happened when I talked to Coach Dungeon. He said that's what Peyton would do. Peyton would see somebody else run something, and they're playing a team. Yeah. And he's like, can we put that in? He said the hardest thing to do when you have a great player, especially in that position, is to get them to understand, yeah, you might want to do that, but can we get everybody else on the same page just like you are? Tom is obsessed with, with doing this, but you got to hold on. Wait a minute now, Tom. You got to understand now, we got 10 other guys that we got to bring along and okay. hopefully get them up on this. But Skip, it has to be an obsession. Trust me. I'm never going to say I was never as great as Tom. I'm never great as uh, uh, LeBron or Jordan. But the one thing that significant other will tell you, that is the end all be all. And you got to have somebody that's willing to understand that. Giselle is mom, dad, uh, uh, the tutor, all that. Because he has to be because he's obsessed with that. Mm-hmm. LeBron is obsessed with basketball. So Savannah is mom, dad, is everything. Yep. Uh, uh, Jordan's ex-wife, she was everything. That is an obsession. Agreed. You missing recitals. You missing practice. Mm-hmm. You missing PTA. You, you missing are. all that. You're missing her so all. So you show me the greats, and I show, and I tell you how obsessed they were to be great, okay. and that's what he is. And when you look at his schedule, he carves out six to seven for family hour dinner. Yeah. Well, at seven o'clock, he's out. Yeah. He, he's not going to help with your homework. Yeah, that's he, it. He's not going to hang around and watch some Disney shows yeah. with you. You get horseback rides no. or piggyback <laughs> rides, or whatever, but you get an hour with that, Skip, but after that. That's it. And I'm out. I'm going to be watching tape yes. last night during football yes. season. He'll give you some yes. more. In and, 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 and Skip, that, <clears throat> that's how it was for me when I get, you know, um, obviously my kids didn't stay with me when, when they would come 
And I'm like, okay, we're going to Six Flags. We're going to go do this. Skip, I've been to ram myself in the dirt. I've been to lift mm-hmm. myself. And I'm like, we can't go. And I, you know, I was like, after a while, they got it. Yep. My daughter, and, you know, my daughter was just here a couple of months ago. And she's like, Dad, now I see why you did what you did. Okay. She had that greater expect, but at that time, Skip, the kids they don't they don't understand mm-hmm. that in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I want, but all of this is for you know this is my job. It's a very short time, and that's why you see guys, man. If I'd have just trained, because I never wanted to be one of those guys, Skip. You know what? If I'd have just trained a little of this, okay, if I'd I got ate it. a little of that. Okay. Tom, when Tom walk away, Skip. The, the, he done squeezed the orange. He done he done recycled it. He done got every <laughs> every every ounce out of that. Yeah. He's cloned the orange. <laughs> yes. Right? So, so Tom, I, t- there's nothing else. Tom could have, Tom just need to get, when he's done, just kick back. And they ask him anything about football. He said, I don't even know what a football is. I don't even want to talk about football no more. Because I've lived, mm-hmm. he's lived football for, Tom would be 44. So he probably started playing it at 10. Yeah. So for 34 years, that's all he's done was live that. And that's why, to me, he qualifies as the hardest worker ever. But it's not, to your point, weight room working, <laughs> although they do work on his yeah, body yeah, now. Yeah, more, they're, they're more banging. Yeah, they're more, all, all that stuff. Yeah. But I'm talking about time spent dedicated yeah. to football. Right. Well, that that's I'm not sure anybody's ever spent more hours. Yeah, because Skip ain't nobody played as long. No. They should talk about Blander. And you know, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't spend the time, Skip, okay. like, like they and do now. And now the again. beauty of Tom Brady at age 43 going on 44, is he has found football heaven with a team in which he actually has fun obsessing in football. Right. Because the coaching staff now is fun. And did you see the picture of him with the quote-unquote tattoo to match Bruce Arians' tattoo? Did you see that? I ain't got no tattoo. I loved it. Yeah, look at this. (laughs) It's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's a little photoshopped, I think. I don't think he actually got that, but, but no, that was clever, that and that was he, funny. Tell yeah. me about that life. Okay, he's not about that life. <laughs> but, but again, it looks better on him than Bruce has looked on him. Yeah. Me. Yeah. 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 I'd say. Yeah, Bruce, you the... But okay. yeah, I mean, like I said, Skip, he made a bet, so he might he got to ride it out. You said if I, we win the Super okay. Bowl, I'm going to get that. That's Bruce made yeah. a bet. Okay, so the point is, he... he He's having fun with it. Yeah. At least that was that was kind of clever. You know what's you know what's fun, Skip? As you start to get old, yep. winning. Well, I got it. Going to work every day, losing. Well, he wouldn't be doing it. Anymore. <laughs> that is correct. I don't care how much you obsessed with something. When yep. you don't win, it, Skip. I got you, Deuce. Well, I think they're gonna win another one. No mercy. Well, guys, after 33 seasons as a head coach, coach, Roy Williams is retiring. He finished with 903 wins, the third most all-time, and was the fastest to reach the 900 mark. Williams on three national titles, all with the University of North Carolina, and is also the only coach to have 400 wins at two different schools, UNC and Kansas. So, Shannon, how will you remember Roy Williams and his career? He be the swept Duke last year. <laughs> that's what I remember. He mm. well, Duke. And that you <laughs> are a Tar Heel fan. I sure am. I sure <laughs> am. And I'm against all things Duke. Mm. Skip, he was... I, <sighs> to follow everybody, when you think of Tar Heels, you know you think of one man, Coach Smith. And he was equal to the challenge. He lived up to the billing. There, 18, there was somebody in the Guthrie, there was two, and Matt Darty. Matt Darty. And, Matt Darty. And, uh, well, yeah. um, but what he was able to do, yep. he put North Carolina back on the he map did. because Coach Smith had it there, Bill Guthrie, he kept it there, mm-hmm. and then Matt Darty let it slip, and then he brought it back to prominence. He put North Carolina back where it was supposed to be. Three national championships, uh, 18 years. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So you're very happy with this I'm, team. I'm very, very happy. And the way to be able to close it out by beating Duke twice? Yeah. Beat him twice. Ta-da! So I know Roy a little bit, and I like him a lot, and he can come across as happy-go-lucky Roy, (laughs) talking about basketball and all that. He's from Marion, North Carolina. But what I would see in Roy Williams was he had a tough side to him, and I mean an angry tough side Mm -hmm. that really worked with college kids. He (laughs) He could lose it occasionally in a good way. Yes. But he was the one who could motivate his kids without pushing them over the edge right. like we were talking to Penny Hardaway. Mm-hmm. If you go too old school, you just lose them. Right. But he never lost them. And he played at North Carolina. He wasn't very good, but at least he had the cachet of, right. I played here. Right. 
and I knew him through the Kansas years. And there were, again, that's another powerhouse program, but he got to two finals. He lost the second one, 03, to Carmelo Anthony. Anthony, and he thought he had a team that year, and Carmelo just took it over. Drip uh, Williams. Nobody uh, had a shoe game like Drip. Well, that's Boy. true. I just love the video of him. The joy, the passion. <laughs> Congratulations. Good stuff today, guys. Have a good day.